Just we'll get it together. We'll get it together. <laughs> All right. Let me see if I can change my background real quick. Is everybody comfortable with their background? But uh, Whitney, I don't know how we not. We're already live on Facebook. We we're, we're friends on Facebook, Jared. Oh, okay, cool. We good then. <laughs> <laughs> Is any? I um, we live, but uh, you know, to do the. Turn on my volume. Uh, Yo, who made the flyer? I did. I'm some hood shit. That jumped fire, though. Yeah, it is pretty what? nice. I, that jumped fire, though. I downloaded it. I was doing my light skin face. <laughs> For real. <laughs> I was doing my light skin face on there. I was like, I'm cute. I um I did it using like a, a collage type thing. Is Kiki on the yeah, um, on tonight? Who? Kiki. I don't know. <laughs> might be, might not. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, were you looking forward to her? Do you see what she brings to the show? Um, I've seen one episode. Oh, yeah, I need these red joints. Um, but I, I've heard her. I've heard her talking. I've heard her talking about. I can't really pinpoint one thing or another oh, okay well i'm asking because um i was thinking maybe like you was looking forward to like her point of view like how some people were most definitely looking forward to your point of view on certain things yes we uh, are all right so okay let me see okay so upload at an image what are you doing ashley doing the background oh real quick I'm oh fine. i just want a different okay. background i think You fancy. I'm gonna try to do a different background. I like the way you Okay, so are. is everybody here except for Kiki? And she did. Do you love me? Oh my gosh, Courtney, you just took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> oh, the drink. Okay. Yeah. All right. You look cute, Whitney, by the way. I know I said Ash look cute, but you look cute too, Whitney. Thank you, girl. I had to try to fix myself up for y'all tonight. It's been a long time. I, I appreciate it. I appreciate that. <laughs> I'm actually not happy with how things are going for me. But oh my gosh, you look fine, Ashley. You look cute. That's another session. But all right, so um, you look good, girl. You better do it. All right, let me. <laughs> Hello, Daniel. Who? Okay, hey everybody that's watching. Hi. Hi, Miss Scott Rock. Oh, I think this is your first time tuning in, but I look forward to you know. And of course, we have our return guest. Who I don't know why she didn't want to come on the show, but um, all right. So hi everyone. We're gonna go ahead and start the show. I was kind of waiting on Miss Kiki, you know, the diva. <laughs> um, she took Courtney place, you know, with being the Beyonce of the group. <laughs> hey Adam, hey my snowflake, hey my uh, Reese oh, with the oh. white chocolate. You know, but um, all right, so this is the I've noticed episode uh nine. Yeah. Uh make sure you go like all the pages, the uh, most definitely the I've noticed uh Facebook page. Once it gets up to my standings, then I will start recording live from there, I guess you could say from that page specifically. Um also go like the Ashley Jimmy Tell Me Facebook catering page, the Follow me on Instagram, um, Ashley Monique843. It's, it's a mixture of everything, you know, a little bit of comedy, a little bit of food, and of course, the I've noticed stuff. Um, and then most definitely go subscribe to the YouTube page, the um, Ashley Jimmy Tummy. And there's a whole playlist with every uh, episode of the I've noticed. Also, when we first started, which was uh, 2020, December 2020, it started out with successfully single. So there's some episodes in there as well. But if you can't catch it live, if you don't, if you your your lifestyle is busy and you can't uh, watch it visually, then you can also go listen to it on um, Pandora, Amazon Music, um, iHeartRadio, a couple other places as well. Um, Spotify. That's why I follow it. Yeah, and Spotify as well. Um, I'm working on a couple extra. I'm just waiting to get approved, pretty much. But uh, I know yeah. where my background's from because Ashley disappointed me. Listen, I'm, I'm not. If, if, background? Was more, if it was more of a Rugrats thing, then I would have been like, "Is it um, hey, uh, no. yes, ma'am." Oh, okay. Yeah, that's the 
I, I didn't have a real good childhood. I was busy. Hey, <laughs> I was doing I know. Show too. Right well, okay, so let me introduce the guest. Uh, we have a special guest here. Oh, oh what is Sammy sound effects? God, I got up. I know we need something to drop one of them little uh, how on the Breakfast Club. Drop one of the crew balls. We need something to introduce our guest. Okay, so how he get up? Uh, uh, make sure I'm pronouncing it right. Jared Jenkins. What's happening? Okay, so uh, let me let me tell you how he come about, and I'll let him. Uh, you know, I saw him commenting on a previous guest, Mister Pipes. You might remember him, West Pipes, or whatever. Pipes. <laughs> you know, and uh, I was like, Ooh. oh, no, or Daniel. Maybe it was Daniel. I don't know. It was somebody. It was somebody that he commented on. And I was like, oh, this is spicy. And I was like. It was mine. Okay, okay, it was yours. Okay, sorry. Yeah. But he knew, I think he, I don't know. I, I got so many Facebook friends that I want up here, especially guys. But, um, but yeah, Jerry, um, introduce yourself. Where can they follow you at if you choose What's for them good? to? You know. Um, I'm Jared Jenkins. Um, I don't have a uh, Twitter, but I have an Instagram that I'm barely on. Uh, Jared Jenkins, Facebook Jared dot excuse me Facebook Jared Jenkins, and that's about it for social media. Born and raised Marion, South Carolina, Swamp Fossils. Yay! We in there. <laughs> I think all of us are like alumni. Yeah, <laughs> we in there. But Not um, really. I was only there for one year. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't but, graduate from there either. <laughs> For real? Catfish. <laughs> but okay, so I don't even know y'all now. You, you should already know Courtney. You <laughs> should know Daniel. And then of course Whitney. And then um <laughs> if you guys choose to, because we have new people watching, possibly, so you can introduce yourself, you know. Either or who can go first, you know. Oh, we're Just introducing going, ourselves? Oh. Yeah. Because oh. you're always going to have new people watching based off of the guests, you know. Oh, gotcha. Well, I'm Whitney. Um, you can follow me on Facebook. Uh, follow my blog page, The Polish Gem, on Facebook. On Instagram, The Polish Gem underscore. If you want to follow my personal page on Instagram, it's Philanthropist, philanthropist but R-H-O. Yeah, if you got it, you got it. Um, but yeah, that's it. All right. Oh. I'm Courtney. You can follow me on IG on at Full Court. You can follow me on Twitter at Full Court Leo, I believe. If not, I'm sorry, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, that's it. <laughs> What's going on? My name is Daniel. Uh, you can follow me on IG at I underscore am underscore rhythm, uh, R H Y T H Y M. You can do the same thing on TikTok. Um, if you like video games and like to see somebody suck on video games, you can also follow me on Twitch. Uh, and I have a stream, I stream video games like Call of Duty, things of that nature at Looney, L O O N E Y X Juice. All right, so it's kind of fire over there. <laughs> Your quality, I said, Daniel was talking earlier about his uh camera like being better than his gaming on his gaming system. I was like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm looking at this thing like, Lord. <laughs> All right, so let's jump straight into it. And also the topics that we're talking about, they're listed on this live. Um, of, you, of course, you can always comment below in the comment section if we have time, uh, we'll read it. But um, tonight we're gonna try something different. We're gonna do an after show. Um, I posted the flyer so you can kind of back out and come back in. But I posted a flyer of the dial-in number that you can use as um, soon as this is over with. And I'm letting you know, it should be good. It should be interesting, you know. But you can call in. You can say whatever you want to say about the topics and, you know, vent, rant. Or if you got something else you want to talk about, then just, you know. Is that on, would that be on Facebook, Ashley? It is. It's on Facebook now. No, I'm saying, will the after thing be on, like, live stream on Facebook like this is? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to put it up there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. So let's jump into the first topic, which is why some men choose not dating single moms or somebody else's baby mama? Single moms or somebody else's baby mama? I think like, baby everybody baby. has a preference, you know, and some guys Rough. prefer not to prefer not to deal with the um, the baggage, you know, uh, the extraness, you know. And from what I've learned recently. Um, well, prior, you always knew, like, baby, you heard the phrase baby mama drama, you know, whatever, whatever. Well, 
recently, you know, because I'm in this dating thing now, um, I've, I was told that some some guys don't prefer not to deal with women that have children based off the fact of um, they are a liability. The children are a liability um, because women want to get married. Women want this family. Uh, women want the man to be the provider. He, she want him to take care of the household. But when it comes down to her biological children with another man, he can't discipline the children as if they're his. And so the man is financially investing and emotionally investing into these children. But honestly, he's getting nothing out of it. It's just like, oh. that's why they considered it a waste, uh, a liability versus an asset, you know. So why they're not dating single women, single moms. Okay. It's a lot of that's, reasons. That was one of the reasons. Well, so, the <laughs> so, yeah. So, Jared, could you please uh, start us off with this, with how you feel about it and your route, or if you're currently, how do you choose to go about it? Or what's your whole well, I mean, Okay, so if a girl already has kids, it's like, it's hard on you to date her because, for one, the kid is going to take up a lot of her time. She's going to be busy a lot doing stuff with the kid, taking the kid to practices and doctor's visits and different things like that. And probably the worst part is the kid's father. If the kid's father is involved in the kid's life, you're going to have to deal with him at some point. Y'all going to have to talk or have some type of communication. He might have an issue with you if you try to discipline the kid. Um, the kid might not like you. Uh, she might expect you to spend money on the kid. Like it's, it's way more stuff that can happen that can cause problems than if you're just dating like a chick that doesn't have kids. So do you have, um, with that being said, when you were saying uh, she might expect you to spend money on the kids, uh, Courtney, I don't know if you remember Courtney and Whitney. Um, I think you tuned in, Whitney, but Courtney, remember we talked about, yeah, we talked about you're dating the mom, not the kid. So, because some women do anticipate you or expect you to buy their kids like food or take the kid, do a kid friendly date. Like you just maybe want to go to yeah. the fair, take her to the fair, but you ain't, that don't mean you want to take the kids to the fair. Like that's extra money, you know? Yeah. So do you have See, I think that's one of those things too, that comes with, I don't think it's, to be honest, I don't think it's anything different from asking a guy about dating a single mom and asking a female about dating a guy that has kids because all the things that you mentioned were just like things I'm thinking of in my head or reasons because like I say all the time when people have kids that's adding another layer to the relationship and it's not like something simple like that's a lot like your time your commitment and I don't think it's anything wrong necessarily wrong with the mom thinking okay well if I do certain things my kid has to be a part of it because they're a mom. So right. some of those spaces where you will originally have to navigate where it's just you and the person, like some of those events or some of those things are going to have to change maybe. And it's like, it's you, the woman, but it's also her kid too. Same thing I feel like with, with guys, it's like, you, it may not be as much because I feel like women, of course, are the primary caregivers for the kids. But, you know, sometimes it may situ be situations where, you know, you, I've been in situations like that, not that I've necessarily been in a relationship with anybody that has kids, but I've been conversing with people who have kids and it's just like, you want to do something or whatever. And it's just like, I, I have to get my kids this weekend or I have to do this and I have to do that. And it's just like, oh man, here we go with the kid thing. And I think that's one of the things, not that it's a bad thing for people to have kids, but I feel like on both sides, you have to understand like the person you, if the person you're dating has a kid, it's going to be a lot of things you have to deal with. And then the person who has the kids has to understand this person is single. So they don't understand how you have to move with kids. Like they don't understand that, you know, if they want to go somewhere, they're just going to pick up and go. You on the other hand have to make accommodations. Like I got to find a babysitter. I can't just up and go on the date at eight or nine o'clock because I got to find somebody to watch the kids. So I think everybody so, has to understand that. Right. So Jared, so where are you at in your life right now? Are you saying no women with kids whatsoever? No, nah, right. like, so that's the thing like it's not that i would never do it and i'm not saying no anybody should never do it i'm just saying it makes it harder like if you have a choice between two identical women and they got everything the same the per personality is the same they look the same all that other stuff but the only difference is one of them has a kid or two by another dude or two and the other one has no kids it's an easy choice you're not choosing the one with kids you see and i and i was told that because i I want to, I want children. And so I was like, well, people was like, well, you're financially stable. You can do it. And I was like, yeah, but I'll be a 
single mom, aka a baby mom, even if me and the guy co-parenting. It yeah. looks better if I was married, had a kid, it didn't work out, and then we got divorced. So I can at least say I was married. But for me to just be like, oh, I want to have a kid, I want to have a family, I have to look at that because when dating wise, let's just a guy, like you said, like some men remember Whitney, you know, when we was talking about real there's no such thing as a real man but real men don't be on social media real men don't do this oh yeah, so, yeah real yeah. men don't they say they don't want to deal with somebody else's child they don't want that house so they don't want that aggravation even if the the child's father is a cool guy like back up, yo you know we can watch the game together you know but still you kind of got that I, I don't know but i was told like that would be so awkward watching a game with the dude really the, the, the um the dad like watching a game with the with no, <laughs> we ain't watching no game. See, that's like, what I'm saying. Like, they, they like, cool. like, who wants to do that? Like, who wants to watch? Like, if you want to, who if you want to watch the game? Like, no dude is trying to have the kid in there. What doing whatever? You know what I mean? I, I think the older night. you are, I think the older you are, the more you're, you're like, you know what? We just, it's just, he's cool. He's a cool dude, or she's a cool girl. Because you know, I told y'all, like, if if I date a guy, well, Jer. Or how are you? Do you have a cat? Like, if you do right now, date a girl with kids or whenever, do you have a cat? Because me, I have two two kids, one baby mom. That's my math equation. Because I know I want to have children. So I think about it financially, like the money coming out. You know, I'm not trying to be the Brady Bunch here. I ain't trying to have six years, you know, three years. Three. So do you have a cat on kids and baby mom? I mean, oh, baby it gets, daddy. It gets worse for every additional kid you got and every dad you got too. like, if you got, like, if you got like one kid by one guy, all right, that's one thing. If you got two kids by two guys, that's like, come on, what are you doing? <laughs> You're doing too much, man. Why you got two different dudes and two different babies? And stuff then happens though. Stuff happens though, because I know, I know somebody who was married, had a kid and, and they were, got divorced and no longer no longer together, but she got into another relationship and they had a kid. She got divorced. Come so she on. has she has kids by two different men. But, but of course while she when she had those kids, she was in a committed relationship. She was married. So I also think like when you're thinking about these things, it of course other things come into play, like the type of relationship that you have, um, that they may have with the other parent, the age of the kids. Like I feel like that's another big thing too because I mean, I don't know about anybody else, but for me, I wouldn't really think about it that much if the kids were older or yeah, of age. Yeah, you know, I said that too. It's, like, it's, 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 much, it's much harder, I feel like, if you're dealing with, like, especially infants. Like, well, you just had this baby two, you know, a, a year ago, like. And you, you already on to the next dude. Yeah, yeah. Well, so we talked about that dating while pregnant. We, we yeah. Talked about oh, that. hell, man. No, man. <laughs> you missed that episode. Dating like, while you, who dating a pregnant dating lady? Dating while pregnant. Yeah. yeah. There's some women oh. that honestly do that. But, you like, know, not I just heard. dating, like, actually being, like, intimate with the woman while she's Come pregnant. Come on, man. I ain't Have gonna you lie, ever heard the phrase, um, um, pregnant pussy is the best pussy? Have you ever heard that before? From your girl? If you made a pregnant yeah, that's what I'm about to say. From your person, probably not from, like, just in. That's crazy. I ain't gonna lie. Any dude who looking at pregnant ladies trying to get on, you need to chill out, man. That's not cool. Oh, they out there, Jared. They out there. That's weird. She it pregnant is. by another dude. What are you doing? It uh, is weird, but they out there. We weren't learned that episode that maybe they don't seek it out, but if it's brought to them. Hell no. You especially uh, feel like, oh, that's kind of, I don't know. I guess not all men. She's already that. pregnant currently. That not didn't just that. happen recently. Matter of fact, I know a girl who was, I didn't even think about this that episode. I knew a girl, we not cool anymore, but I knew a girl who was sexually active with somebody else's baby. Come I know on, a man. couple girls that was like that. I think that say, that say something, man. That say something when you don't even have the baby out and you already on to the next dude smashing? You tripping. Yeah. yeah. Chill out. So, you so sit down Daniel, somewhere. How, how you do you the feel baby. about it? Because you're our other guy. You're You're more of the you're more how do I feel about what? Daniel's more the, the loving guy, so it's yeah, gonna he, be... he, he's the, the teddy bear. He's the very he wise. He's the, oh, the perfect. He's the dream guy. I'm coming for my life right now. Which, which I'm kind of like, Loki, Daniel might be a serial killer because he's just too <laughs> nice. Like, he's just too nice. You know, something's going on. I'm going to have to hire a PI. But, um, so <laughs> the question was, hey. some men choose not to date single moms. Like, are you okay with that? And if so, 
what's your cap like how many kids how many dads like how do you navigate me personally um i have no problem with it i always joke i always say like i i'll just renew my stepdaddy license last month i'm good <laughs> i always joke about that um, <laughs> right <laughs> I have I have no problem with that. Here's the reason why, is because for me, um, being somebody that doesn't have kids, um, if I really like for one, if I really like the female, and she has kids, because I don't have kids, my schedule can, you know, kind of work and be flexible with her schedule with her child. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. The other thing for me is, until we get serious. I don't plan on meeting that child. So like the things that Jared was saying, I definitely agree with as far as, you know, being financially available for the child and her mother, his or her mother, things of that nature. That ain't coming until I know you got potential to be the one. Like I know that we are <laughs> really, you know what I'm saying? Like we're going to have that conversation. Like I just want to let you know, I do have kids, you know what I'm saying? Oh, that's fine. You know what I'm saying? But you just know, like it's, it's going to be me and you, we're going to learn each other and then we'll incorporate the family dates and then we'll because I don't want to I don't here's my my only thing is being a part of a broken family is I don't want anybody to come into my life as a kid and then I get attached to them and the next thing I know we don't they only date yeah. in six months that's bad you know what I'm saying yeah. that's so like I'm I'm to the point where listen we're gonna figure us out before we figure out the family because we might not be compatible you might just think I'm cute and I might think you cute you might go on a couple of dates and then find out hungry. this ain't working. Cause she hungry. Right. She... <laughs> so, so are you, know you saying? So, are you saying that you're not ready to be called Mister Daniel <laughs> by the kid? Miss, Mom, Mister Daniel's at the no, door. No, I'm. I, this is what's gonna happen. If I'm, if I'm gonna, if I, if something happens where I have to meet the child, right? I'm gonna be Uncle Daniel until I'm stepdad. You get oh, what I'm saying? Okay. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be mommy's, mommy's home. I don't boy. like that whole uncle thing. Like, you what you want? You don't like that either. You can hit that. I'm, a, I'm not saying literally. I'm not saying. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying, Jay. Like, like, you want to be like, uncle such and such, and then when y'all get mom. serious. I'm saying, now you I'm saying as a phrase, we'll, we'll figure something out. What to call me? <laughs> then I'm fine with Mr. Daniel. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like I'm Daniel. saying, I, maybe I shouldn't use uncle. I don't mean nothing like like that. But I'm you just know they, they used to say that back. They're they, not gonna they, know they, they our business. Back in the day, right. everybody was uncle. Everybody who they, I know that's so weird. Like why nasty. you want them to be uncle? That's nasty. You know what I'm sitting here thinking. That's nasty. I feel but like get, even if you're but you talking get what to I'm somebody, saying though. Yeah. Like y'all get what I'm saying? Like we're, I'm yeah. like, the name. They're not gonna know our business until it's time for them to know our business. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Even if there's a, a on the occasion, I have to come knock on the door and Junior answers the door and I'm saying, hey, you know what I'm saying? I'm here for your mom. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to be like, I'm here for your mother. Like, we're going out on a date. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to just <laughs> let them know. Listen, like, was okay, a, it, it we're was going a, on a business um, venture. Like, we're going to look at some property. Like, they don't got to know our business. You know what I'm saying? Was, I can't remember what comedian it was, but it was like, it was like a long time ago, like back in depth deaf comedy jam days but it was this guy he was talking about um dating single moms and he was it was a big guy and he was like oh he said he got so tired and he said he stopped dating single moms because he was tired of their kids coming to the door saying ma <laughs> that fat man at the door <laughs> he was no, like, he's like, he like he done with single moms he was like he's so tired of them badass kids and that fat man at the door <laughs> That was my afraid. And they be favorite, grown. Uh, Someone be grown though. Know. Like they be bad grown kids. Like they be saying like They're things like, that adults would say. Like what? How like, you talking the, like that? The, like the, that the, you only the, the, and you can't the, talk the, around kids either. Like when you be on the phone, like hypothetically, like being on the phone with Courtney or something, you be like, "Yeah, girl, I got this dude." Da, da. And then kids be going back seeing stuff. They be like, "Oh, yeah. you that lady that my mama said who have a must." Like kids are just they are parents. They don't they, care. Everything. They don't care everything that is cute but you know i think it's hard like if you are uh talking to someone who has kids you know i understand you know you don't want to you know take it to that level as far as introducing somebody to the kid and maybe like risking the kid getting attached to the person but i also think it's it's pretty hard to not include or want to do something in some aspect like if I'm talking to somebody that I know has kids and it's a younger kid, like I don't feel like I can completely 
forget about the fact that he has a child and just focus on getting to know that person. Oh, no. Oh no, no, no. That's, you know that's, what I mean? Not, like yeah, even yeah. no, I I was saying that because like even in the aspect I know everyone was saying about like buying things for the child or doing things for the child. I don't think that should be like expected. But at the same time, I feel like naturally, like every now and then you may want to do something for the kid. Like you may want to take them someplace. And that's my problem. Something. That's my problem. I, I try not something. to be a, a give too much of a yeah, so, and I and I feel like you know? that like that area is is fine. Like I don't think you should completely like, oh, you know, I know you got a kid, but we ain't thinking about them at all. Like I'm just focused on you because that's a part of them. Like, and I think that's the that's the side of being like a single mom or a single dad that it's kind of like yeah you're dating me but like this is the extension of me so automatically like my kid comes into play so it's just like because of that like i feel like automatically every now and then you're going to want to do something for the kid or uh, be well, considerate of their time i still think that Can comes with think? a with a certain time limit though like in my opinion i still think that comes with needing some time to really figure out if this is what you want like you're going as far as, that's what yeah. I was about you know to what I'm saying? Like, like when you say when you you know like of course you want to start like you know getting stuff for the kids and stuff like that is that before you meet them or is that after you meet the kids i'm i'm kind of like, like actually, i'm kind of bad with that like i say i'm not gonna do none of that but eventually like if i know somebody has kids like if i'm in a store and i see something I, i'll find myself probably like oh you know mm-hmm. But like I'm, I'm just like that. Like I, I will. But like I try not. I won't do it like as much. But I, every now and then, like I will think about it. And like if it's something, not even necessarily something to buy, just like just being considerate of like their time schedule and what they have going on with their kid. You know, they got, I don't know, sports <laughs> stuff going on. You know, I, I feel like even like if it gets to the point where we're like conversing like regularly and we're like going on dates and we're you time know, yeah yeah time is being spent yeah but definitely. so yeah i get yeah I, yeah so yeah so you i guess be doing that before you actually met the kid oh no no i mean i would know about the kid before i do all of that stuff not just off the whim like oh i got a kid and i'm just starting by like i would like know about the kid or like seeing them on facetime or something you know not just yeah, yeah. typically how, well, how the kids come up. I was confused because I thought you were saying that like, but like just knowing that that person has a kid, maybe you know he has like a five-year-old son, you're going to start buying like games. And oh stuff. yeah, no, no. Nah, some, yeah, some connection has already been made. Yeah. 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 Typically yeah. how the, how the gift giving kind of starts is like when um they were like, oh yeah, my daughter's birthday is coming up. But I'm like, oh, well, what are you getting now? You know, because you know how I feel about gifts. I, like, I feel like I'm the best. I've done that. Yeah, that's my problem. And I'm like, oh, I've what are you getting them? And they're like, oh, I'm not sure. Like, transparency here one of the gifts that i did get but it wasn't for like a kid it was for a mom was a bra like i was talking to a guy and he was like oh my mom she uh wants a bra and he was like i know it's kind of weird i was like this would be interesting i'm like i want to see a guy go into a, a store and buy a bra you know but and them not thinking that you want to put it on you know because you know how the world is now but um, but I ended up going to get the, the mom's bra. He like gave me money on it, but I ended up getting her like a couple more bras because they was like on sale and stuff. So, mm-hmm. all right. So, um, so everybody that's watching, uh, like I said, after show, if you want to tune in, you know, because I know we have like moms who are either single moms who had kids, and you might be in a relationship now with a, a guy who's not even our female, that's not even the children's father. If you want to come in and weigh in on that topic, if you haven't commented in the section below, then please call in after the show so we can talk about it. All right. So um, second topic is why is everybody calling Russell Wilson a simp lame? Every name in the book other than a good man. Now, there are some men out there that are championing him, you know, that is like, you know, that's one black man or whatever his ethnicity is. That's one guy that uh, doesn't mind dating a single mom, you know, and he's, he embracing it. And then everybody, I've seen some comments where they're like so upset with him because uh, pretending to what Jared said earlier about same woman, two women, same thing. The only difference is she, one has a kid. So there was like, He's a millionaire. He's good looking. He got a lot going for himself. Why would he want to date somebody who future and ran through? Why would he want to date somebody that has a kid? I know, I know. Oh, so wow. let's talk about it. Let's, let's talk about it. 
Bow Wow, 50 Cent. There's, there's other dudes in the future, too. <laughs> Okay, but like everyone. That don't uh, matter legit, though. That's uh, a legend. Oh, I want to hear what he over there mumbling in the, into that mic. What is you mumbling? <laughs> no, I'm just saying like mumbling like the people the, the whole thing with future. The whole thing with with the whole thing with Russell Wilson and Sierra is funny just because of the whole future part of it. Like the fact that she went from future to Russ and they're so different, at least on the outside. It's just yeah. funny. It's just it's just like it's like it's a perfect recipe for jokes. Because you look at Russ and he's like a cornball. You look at Future and he's all thugged out. And Fifty you, Cent was thugged out. Yeah, so it's just like it just make you want to joke on him. Like I don't, a lot of people are Wait, joking her and on Fifty Russ. Cent were a thing. I thought they had just like did. The and, music. That, and that's that's the thing. Like they're saying that you, she had to go, which I think a lot of women go through this once we really deep deep dive into it. Which is we do go through that phase of I want that, you know. But then you be like, they ain't shit. You know what? I'll take a cornball, but I've always wanted a cornball in a mid ugly guy. Oh, but I didn't know her and 50 Cent was a thing. See, that's my thing too. Like, it's like, you know, people are linked with people, but I'm like, okay, I just thought they like, I don't know, like did something together. Like, I didn't think they were like ever dating, but I guess 50 Cent is on her roster. Of I was looking this up because I knew it was a topic and I was looking like who has Sierra like publicly dated. There's been there's articles that say that she denied it, but then I guess she was on the Wendy Williams show and she had talked about it. So they denied they, fifty, huh? Yeah. Oh, please, she oh. wrote a song. She wrote songs about it. And uh, we, we know that for sure, though. Did she ever say that I wrote this song for this? Right. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like I didn't. Oh, I mean, when I had looked it up, like I said, there was articles that said that, that she said in some interview that she denied it, that it was only just a music video, blah, blah, blah. They were getting engaged. Apparently, apparently. Oh, 50 Cent and he had went on the Wendy yeah, Williams. Yeah, he, he said he bought a ring for her. He and admitted. What's it called? She went on the Wendy Win Talking about Sierra? Show and she yeah. Talked yeah. About it. yeah, no, they dated for real. Yeah, and uh, he, he was about to um, marry her. Uh, 50 Cent like, was about to marry Sierra? Yeah, like he was, That's he was crazy. talking. He talked about it on some type of interview somewhere, and he was talking wow. about like after they broke up, he was talking about the the fact that he was really serious about, about her. her. Like yep. he was really serious yeah. about her. I don't know about the whole like I was gonna propose thing, but I know that it, like they were in a committed relationship. Well, I don't know if it was committed. Well, she talked about it on the Wendy Williams about. show. I think there's different reports out there, but they dated. But I guess my thing is yeah. like. How many rappers out here you see going through Instagram model to the next Instagram model? Like, I mean, it's definitely a double standard. There's yeah, always going to be a double standard when it comes to that. Standard. Yeah, I ain't, I ain't mad at Sierra for for you know getting with Russ. It's just oh, funny because like real strong. Back up off that mic. Oh, I'm sorry. I turned the volume up. My bad. Oh, <laughs> is it better now? Yeah, yeah that's yeah. good. Nah, but oh, can't even scare me. The whole yeah, thing. Yeah, me too. <laughs> The whole thing with, with Russ taking pics with future son and, and hugging him and pushing him around in the stroller. Like, <laughs> that's a part of the stepdaddy license. That looks crazy. Know, that's I had to Why are you pushing that man's that son? That's the permit. Yeah. Why does that look that crazy? The license is when he got uh, married. Not your son. Can I talk? Can I, let me say something real quick. Because y'all know what I'm going to say. I am on Russell's side. Because <laughs> Russell <laughs> is me and I am Russell. I respect okay? Russ, but it's still cool. Daniel though. is for the stepdaddy license. He is for it. It's not, you know, it's not just a stepdaddy thing. It's just a simple fact that the type of man that he is, yeah, is is a rare breed. And the thing is, it's the it's only the ones. Well, I can't say that because I don't know everybody, but it's mainly the ones that have some type of of bow wow in them, some type of dog in them that is making them look bad. <laughs> not you know what I'm saying? Well. And it's like there's there's what it like literally like not not bow wow the, the rapper. I'm saying some type of dog in him that he oh, well, did that, something well, that to a Then if you didn't mean it that way. Uh, yeah. Yeah, she was dating Bow Wow too. I read a meme that yeah, she did. That. That's why I did that. It was it was a pun. It worked because I, I thought I was talking. Said that that guys pick on Russell Simmons because he was the guy that they picked on in high school, and then now that they're all Russell up, Simmons was the guy that nobody wanted. Y'all talking about Russell Wilson or Russell Simmons? Simmons. Oh, Russell Wilson. Ahead. Sorry, <laughs> Russell Wilson. I, sorry. I, I wouldn't want Russell Simmons either. <laughs> <laughs> That man got Kamora Lee. He did that. But so basically, uh, he was rich. He was, he was rich. That they picked on I, I, we can talk I, about the plies topic as well. Like, women going out here doing their bodies only just to get with rich guys that are ugly. And Rick, Russell Simmons was... That's the move. Like, you got get, get to get to the money, man. If you got money, you can get chicks, bro. Easy. 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 Honestly. Not a problem. I mean, you, you might not get all of them, but you're going to get a lot of them. They're going to flock to you. You don't even have to do what it. Future said, didn't Future have said something like that quote? Said He said, if you get money, then you hurt tight. Facts. 
That's yeah. true. Yeah. That's you even know. true in the hood. That's true in Mary County. That's true. That's true. Thanks. You don't have yes. to be handsome. You get money, you like, get girls. You're not gonna get a good guy. Like you can go back to high school. Let's go back to high school. Let's say like you got the the cornballs and the nerds and the jocks or whatever, like the guys who play sports and stuff and got a car or whatever. Or maybe not even have a car. They might be bumming rides with their homeboy, a scrub, you know. But the guy that's actually good for him, that's on the honor roll, that's on the band, that's doing what he's supposed to do, has no a play. car, has a little side job. No the play. girl isn't looking at him. Like, she no. wants the guy who got the letter jacket, like, who, mm-hmm. who need help with his homework, you know, who, who she buying pizza at the pizza line. Like, you know, that's just how it, unfortunately. There was a, there was a post that went viral. There was a post that went viral and it was talking about if he if he if he stay if he goes to work and comes home, pays the bills, he's a corny A nigga. Excuse my language, a corny A person. Sorry. And that's but that crazy. was verbatim. That was that was verbatim. Uh, the, some people just be posting stuff to get a reaction. Yeah, like <laughs> people just be people just be talking. And what was the, it that they the, said that they needed? Like they wanted to go out, go dancing. What the move? What what did what? Did no, they, they were. Ba- oh, that's that's all the quote said. I don't like. I didn't. Oh, I need didn't more. Say anything I need else. Com- I'm a comment person. Like I I, I go and. Right. But Jared, what did you mean when you said that? She, you know, they showed like future. I mean, not future. Russell is definitely involved in little in little future's life. Like he does As things he for him. Be. He plays sports. He does all of those things. And you were just like, I don't know if it was joking or not, but you was just like, you know, he's he was pushing that man's son in a stroller, doing whatever, throwing a football with him. Like, why is it that is it that he shouldn't be doing those things? No, he definitely shouldn't be doing those things. That's why not. I disagree. Because that's disagree. not my thing is. Levels. It's That's not his kid. No, he didn't say it levels. He said he's doing okay. it. I think there should be a boundary when it's my kid and you dating. Just because you dating my kid's mom don't mean you can but be they married now. That's There's a question. difference. Still, though, yeah, that's well, let's, let's let him finish. Let's let him finish. So he, can he kiss finish. his kid, too? Can he kiss him and hug him and all that? I don't want you kissing my son or my daughter or nobody. You're not my. You're not their dad. Get out of here. So, so, okay, so you're saying, like, no, like what I guess, like what would be acceptable to do, for Russell to do? You can talk to him, you can talk with him, you can throw the football with him, but don't be picking him up, don't be doing that. Just keep your hands off my kid, bro. Yeah, can I ask you a question? Go ahead, pause, pause before you answer the question, Courtney. Hold up, I see a lot of people commenting, women are commenting. Uh, keep this topic in mind, call in after the show so you can um voice your opinion because we need y'all, y'all moms up here. Like, you don't have to be on live like we are, but just call in. After the show, because I want y'all opinions. I see y'all. Okay, go ahead, Courtney. So you're saying okay. So Sierra have more have t- basically almost full custody of like the child is with him with her most of the time. She's married. They have a whole household together. You're saying that there's no possible way that that would be okay to actually spend time with the child that's living in the same house as you. No, you can spend time. I'm saying it's how you spend time. I. You don't, want him to t- you don't want him to show him love? Like, that's no, the love that you're I really, about. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I really don't want him. I really don't want another man just because you dating my kid's mom, spending time with my son. That's my son. You know what I'm saying? I understand that. I understand that. But that's where your responsibility comes in to make sure that you make up the time that you're missing out. Because there's, no, I'm gonna spend time with him, but I just don't want that guy just because he's smashing my mom, my, smashing my kid's mom, mean he can play with my kid and, and kiss him and hug him and play. But, and roll that's just me personally. I'm not speaking for nobody. It's just me. I'm I just don't yeah. I'm not comfortable with that. But and, you know, and we're outnumbered. Man, you know what I'm saying? So no, but go ahead. Here, here's go the thing. Ahead. The only thing that I disagree with, the only thing that I disagree with, Jared. With, well, I disagree with almost everything you said when it comes to this, but <laughs> um, and the only here's the only reason why. The only reason why is this. Now you know that they have another child now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, yeah. um, they have a younger child. They have two other child, two other yeah. children. Excuse me. I'm working on the third. How would you feel? I'm gonna give you a scenario. How if 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 Russell was doing everything that you said that he that you wanted a man to do, as far as like don't be affectionate with my son or daughter, don't you know do certain things with my son or daughter. If he he's predominantly at their house, okay. He's not. He's he, future don't got sole custody. You know what I'm saying? He's predominantly at Sierra and, and Russell's house. Okay. How would you feel if that child came home to you and was like, Mr. Russell don't like me. Mr. Russell, don't, he don't really mess with me like that. Then you're going to have a problem 
because now you're thinking of something else. That makes sense what I'm saying? Maybe not you, but the other, the other person, the other, like, uh, maybe not you because you're, you're different, but most men are going to be like, all right, so what is the problem that you have on my child? Now your child sees Russell doing things, being affectionate, doing Mm -hmm. things towards, they don't know about stepdaddies and real daddies. Mm -hmm. You know how young Russell's child was when they got together. You know what I'm saying? So the fact that Russell's there 90% of the time and the other 10% he's with Future, I mean, excuse me, the kid is with Future, he he sees him as a father figure. So now, like, it, 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 he's going to have, he's going to learn that thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm, I'm jumbled yeah. up, but I'm just saying, no, like, you, you, I get he, what you're he, saying he deserves too. to get the same treatment. If I have a child, if I, if, if I marry a woman and she has a child and then she births my child, my body that my stepchild is going to get the same treatment that my biological child does with boundaries, of course, with certain boundaries. Yeah. But I'm going to talk to that, that to that baby daddy like, look, I'm not it, it's got to be fair because I don't want your child to feel to grow up resenting not only me, but his or her mother because she's allowing that. You get what I'm saying? I do. So that it, it just it just in that situation, I feel like it has to be equal. There's some, there's some things that you can't do. Like, I'm not, I don't think I'm ever going to spank. Like, if I, if I ever date somebody with a child, I can't put my hands on that child. There's some things you just can't do. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Okay. So we gotta when go it back comes to there. showing love and affection, and yeah, I, that's the only thing I disagree with. That's what I, I think I, it is, just love and affection. So it's like, I don't want to say that yeah. you're saying that he shouldn't show him love and affection. But to me, those things that you're mentioning that he shouldn't do, those are just like standard things. Like, if he's going to school and you're like, have a good day at school, and he goes to hug his mom, you don't want him to hug Russell? No, I don't want him to hug Russell. That's just that's me. True. We okay, all so different. But I don't want him hugging Russell Wilson. That's not my... <laughs> Thing. So you no. sound like you're old school. You sound like you're traditional. Meaning, I'm gonna that, be with the kids' mom. I don't, that, I don't want my kid with I some. I don't want my kid I, I with. with you are. You're if not I have a baby with, with somebody, I'm trying to make it work. Hey, with them. turn your mic yeah. down just a little more. Turn my mic down just a little more. Yeah. If I have a baby with somebody, I'm trying to make it work with them, and okay, I hopefully yeah. they don't end up. You know, we don't end up breaking up, and they don't have to go get some other dude. But that's not ideal for me. That's not an ideal situation where my kid is around some other dude and getting hugged and kisses and all this other stuff with some other dude. That's my kid. It's not, I don't, I'm not comfortable with it. That's just me. So, so to me, it feels like Gary is the type where he's saying, um, even if they are having problems, he's going to do everything in his power to keep his family together. There you they go. got to go to uh, therapy on their own, couples therapy, you know, exactly. kid in there, like he don't want two separate households. So he he oh, comes off as the type where he's saying, even if it ain't working, he's still gonna be in the, the household for the kid at least until they graduate. We're gonna, We're gonna have to make that don't work. I ain't about to right. have my kid with some other dude. Right. Yeah. I mean, I I mean, I get what you're I saying because I do believe that it's boundaries. You know, I believe, but I don't feel like there should be boundaries on how you love the kid and how you interact as far as like. I can't get too close to you, or I can't do if that. Like, another dude they're gonna that feel that. Already, they're gonna feel. I feel, I feel, I feel like the boundary should be. I feel like the boundary should be, especially like with Russell and Sierra. Like, I don't know what Future does on the daily, but of course he lives with Sierra and Russell, so we're gonna see them interacting with him more. My only thing is, like, I feel like just because they're doing that doesn't mean that Future is not there for his kid, like he needs to be. You know what I mean? I like agree. he could be, I he agree. could be doing things for the kid and and all those things like um, without, you know, a lot of people think that he may be not active. I don't know their situation. We know but- he ain't active because there's a lot of them damn kids. The only, the only active father we know is Bootsy with his trapping ass. Yeah, like, 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 would y'all want y'all kid to have daddy love for a kid for somebody who's not their dad? That's that's what I'm saying. Like, that's my only boundary. Like, I don't want the other the step parent. To overstep their boundaries to make it seem like that they're their biological parent. You know what I mean? Like there's my whole thing is I'm thinking along the lines. I'm thinking along the lines of the child of what the child, child, of what the child is gonna think. Because I think sometimes we know fail to realize that. Yeah, and that's that's no problem. That is no problem. And it, and and y'all should make sure that the child knows that you're the daddy. But at the same time, it doesn't matter to an extent if a child sees. One child, like his stepbrother or sister, especially if they're young, I'm talking about really young kids, Mm -hmm. they see a certain treatment happening to somebody who lives in the same house as them. All that's going to go around out the window. I think we you know all we all kind of experience that low key. If, I mean, right. we kind of want to get personal a little bit. I think we all, and correct me if I'm wrong, or even say, I actually I don't want to talk about that. But I think we all kind of was 
our mom and dad probably was together. They did, it didn't work out. Then mom had a life. You know, she brought in a guy or didn't work out. They brought in another guy. It didn't work out. And then she was like, you know what? This ain't for me. I'm just going to take care of that on my own time. I don't want men around my children, you know? So I think we I all know there's situations, though. There are situations. And there are situations where I just want to say this one thing, if that's okay. There are situations where that kid grows up resenting their parents, stepdad or biological mom, or vice versa. They grow up resenting, and it's and the reason why is because when when my when my situation happened and my mom started dating other other men, even though I was I was borderline a teenager when it happened, I already had the mindset like you ain't gonna tell me what to do, you ain't gonna do that in the third. You know what you I'm saying? You ain't my daddy. You ain't my daddy. And the thing is right. this, like, and which is cool, you know, and I still kind of felt that way even though I'm 27. If she dates somebody else, like, listen, know your role. But the simple fact of the no matter problem. is, like, if <laughs> if if it was that, I think if I was a kid and my mom was to marry somebody else and I would have a stepbrother or sister and that father, that specific father is doing everything for his child and not doing anything for me, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, okay, I only see my dad on the weekends. I don't know if this is real love or fake love. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if he just want to take pictures with me just to show Facebook that he's he's being a father. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's just, I, I'm thinking along the lines of the kid, like, I want fairness. I, yeah, you my stepdad, you're not my biological father, but yes, I might still want a hug. You might be the only father I know. Courtney has something you know she's been having her hand up for the longest. <laughs> Courtney. <laughs> What's it called? I was just going to say, I didn't feel like that at all. I think my parents have been divorced for as long as I can remember. And I think, I don't know if it was a conscious decision for them to start dating when they, you know, when I was like, you know, in middle school, you know, and up. I don't know if that was a conscious thing. I don't know if it just happened that way, but they both lived their lives. And I never, from either side, even when they were dating people that they might have been getting serious with, or, you know, they both remarried, you know, all that good stuff like that. I've never gotten that, that feeling of, um, I had to not like the other person or, you know, vice versa. I mean, to this day, my mom, my dad's remarried. My mom is like, that's your, you know, that's your stepmom. You need to get closer to her. You need to do, 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 do. like it's, it, she's always been that person. My dad has always been that person. I don't, it's yeah. just, well, I have not really much that. I mean, my dad doesn't really talk, but that's a whole nother story. But, um, but I've never gotten that feeling. I've never gotten that feeling or um, like uh, by mom um, when she had got remarried, he had, kids too I think that were around the same age and he treated me just the same granted I mean we, I didn't know him that much I didn't know him that well but I mean he treated me just the same but I think oh go ahead Courtney go ahead no go ahead oh you froze. oh you froze for a second Ashley um Jerry let me ask you um Davide, does it matter can you hear me yeah, I hear you. Okay, because my internet just went out. Does it matter if it's a boy or a girl? Because you're kind of giving me vibes of like, if it's just a girl, son. it's probably worse, honestly. Because now, oh, yeah. thinking like, so now I'm thinking, okay, cool. So it's a grown ass man around my daughter. Um, especially how old is she? You know what I'm saying? If she's preteen age, you know, a lot of them kids get molested who got these stepdads around, um, yes, stepmom, stepdad. So I'm not trying to have my daughter around no dude that I don't know. That's just it. I don't know, like that. That's to me. That's just yeah, dangerous. I, mean, I, I agree. I agree. To I have your kids around that, that guy. I see where you. That's not her dad. Yeah. That's not his dad. I'm their dad. Yet this guy's up in the house, walking around in his boxes and t-shirt. That's I'm not with it. Yeah. All right. So final thoughts on this topic, and then we're gonna go to the the. Uh, the I third. just want to say I respect what Jared is saying. I think for Jared too, yeah. it's more like from the jump, it's like I'm gonna like try to be with my kids mom like any Don't means necessary yeah any means together. necessary keep it together because if it, if we're not together like i'm not trying to navigate having nobody else around my kid like i get That's, it i get yeah. it yeah and i respect that yeah. If I people think, don't think, think about when they have to kids, do. they don't think about it in advance. Like, yo, let me let's make sure we actually like each other and we're gonna stay together. How you pregnant and you already broke up with the dude? That mean y'all ain't had no planning at all. Y'all didn't think about yeah, it. Yeah, with that pregnant thing. <laughs> How you? Or even you if you were a year, like Sierra, Sierra had, <laughs> Sierra broke up with Future. The baby was like nine months old when she started talking to Russ. That means you and Russ. I mean, that means you and Future must not have did a lot of planning if y'all already broke up and the baby not even one year old yet. That's terrible I planning. Mean, 
things do happen though. I mean, That's, things hey, things happen, happen but y'all they, they do it. Big you know, <laughs> things happen. That, All right, that, so that I will say. So, okay, so once again, everybody that was topic number two, we have an after show. If you have an opinion on it, call in. All right, moving on to the uh, third topic, uh, which this went viral uh, with B. Simone, the comedian B. Simone, manifesting love challenge. Um, basically, she was saying um, women, mostly women, we have this list of we want this and a guy, this, 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 but we're not able to provide that or be that or when we do find a guy that possesses the things that we do have on our list, we're not equipped for him. We're not made for him. We're not, we can't do what we need to do for him, you know. I don't um, think that's the case. So, man, who would like to start? I was just going to say, I don't think that's the case. Like, I understand. So, I, I agree with everything B. Simone said, but just to what you said just now, I don't feel like we as women, well, let me not write say a, that. Write out a list of what we wanted no, to No, no, not a list, but I was just going to say, I don't, like, well, I can't speak for everybody else. I know for me, like, in my mind, I'm not, I'm not going to be listing or in, not, maybe not even writing it down, but thinking, oh, he has to have this, he has to that, have that, have that. And I'm well, not I where I need to be. Like, I want somebody who compliments me or going to make me or is going to make me better. So I'm not going to list these three, five, ten things that I want in a guy. And I don't measure up to what I'm looking for. Like, I I don't think that's just smart to do that. So you're saying, so you saying common sense wise, you shouldn't even do that. Right. I was just going to say, yeah. yeah. So and I, I feel like I feel like the women or women or whoever does that, like that's somebody that's look, probably looking for a way out. That's probably somebody that's, they're looking to be saved. That's, yeah, that's how I feel. right, right. They're in a certain position and they're looking for somebody yeah. to come save them. And I feel like if you are in that position, like you really do need to look internally and figure out what it is that makes you feel like you need this other person in order to get out your situation because it's like you need to want to do better for yourself first. So I would never like have all these expectations if I know that I can't, that I'm not there or I, I don't have somebody to meet me there. Like, and I feel like that's a lot of women. Like, I don't even understand. Like, I don't think a lot of women do that. Like you'll get some oh, women no. that- <laughs> they do. No, I, they do. I feel like, I, I feel like overall. Like, yeah, yeah, I feel yeah, like they're overall, they're like the women, the women, let's just say regular women, or even women that, you know, we start with regular women and people who are more, you know, I don't know, advancing like their life, they got themselves together, whatever. Those type of women are not so like, I feel like if a well-established woman is saying, I need this, I need this, and I need that, nine times out of 10 is because she already has those things. So she's already set the standard because I've already gotten to this level. Why would I want somebody to come into my life that's not going to add to it, but bring me down the level? Like, it's like now I've I've, I've worked on myself. I healed my traumas. I'm, I'm good with my relationship. I want something healthy. Why would you want me to say, oh, you know, everybody ain't on that level. So just because some people not on that level, I have to stoop down and just say like, okay, I got to accept this now, even though I'm already advanced from that level and want more. I feel like well-established people are not just naming off stuff that they don't have themselves. Courtney, what was you going to say? I forgot it. <laughs> <laughs> you need a notepad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you she does, she does need a notepad. Because by the time... And it's even right now. <laughs> But y'all see what I mean? Like, I don't know. Y'all help y'all tell me what y'all I mean. Think. You know. No, I agree with exactly what you said. Like, it's common sense for us to think that, you know, you're not gonna you shouldn't seek what you don't, you know, have or you shouldn't require what you can't bring to that table. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think that's that seems like common sense to us. But like Daniel was saying, like, I think a lot of women a lot more than we realize want it that way. Yeah. This it's, it's like, a lot. It's a lot more women that that you, you know, like what, what type of things? Like what? Like name some stuff. Like name some it's stuff. Literally, you... literally, he don't gotta be rich, but he gotta be financially stable. Like, like what be like what be, be Simone says. Like you want a man that's financially stable, but your account is in the negative. To me, that sounds like you want to be saved. To me, that sounds like okay, you want me to pay your bills because you can't pay your own. You know what I'm saying? Like Ti said it best: a woman that asks for nothing should get everything. A woman that asks for everything should get nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like what do you have? For I guess that had to do with what we were talking about last week too. Like, what what do you have for me? You know what I'm saying? 
Like, this is what you want. This is your list. But do you have this? Are you financially stable? To, or is your credit A1 so we can go look at a house? Or does the house got to be in my name, too? You get what yeah. I'm saying? The more you ask, like, you got to put more on the table, too. You can't just be and asking. I, and I, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And that's where, the, that's where the... And I think women try to use the fact of the man that should be the breadwinner as an excuse to not bring nothing to the table. Come on, Daniel, you're preaching. So <laughs> what happens, <All> right. <laughs> well, that just came to me. So, and, and, and a lot of times, like, that's where, cause I, I was watching another podcast and the girl was like, I feel like I, you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like a man should be the provider, hundred percent of the provider. I can do, I can do the other things. I get what you're saying, but at the same time, what other you things? Know what I'm saying? What other right. You know right. Like, so basically, it still sounds to me you're looking to be saved. Yeah, like and, I, and, I, and I hate to say it. She got to be like cooking, cleaning, you know, sex, everything without, without no objections. If, if I'm doing all that, it shouldn't be no question. Like, it shouldn't be no, oh, no, I'm not in the mood right now. No, no, it shouldn't be none of that. I'm doing all my job. What are you doing? You feel me? <laughs> I'd rather have a job versus be a, at a, a well, guy. And my, girl, me and too. And that's my I'm thing. Glad. That's my thing. Oh, much so, I okay, joke I about some, it and I just be like, who told women we had to work? But low key, like, I would not like doing that. Like, I would, yeah, it's it's easy. all you gotta do is, is, is what cooking a, a meal? That's, That's fine. It's the, it's the extra shit. It's the, well, well, I mean, if you start having my, kids, like, you, you I lose yourself all the time. But here, so, here's Dude, my that's question. Part of, that's a lot of times you gotta do that. But here's my question when it comes to that. When you said, Ashley, when you said, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. That Courtney talks, Courtney forgets. <laughs> hey, yeah, I'm gonna say go ahead, go ahead. I don't think any of us here are the type of women who just don't want to work to begin with, right? Yeah, so we have to, and that was I was getting ready to say. Oh, you really? Know what I'm saying? You just have to back that because I know for yeah, none, nobody on this screen is the type to be like, I, I'm just not gonna work, even if we had the option to not work. I don't think any of us would be like, We're not gonna work. Right. I don't know. I think Ashley might actually look like she might. <laughs> say this i will say this because i've been wrestling with certain things because i i feel like i want to retire at 40 and i was like what is retiring at 40 which is in five years and i'm like i don't i think i'm still gonna be one of those people that i'm not going to walmart you know i ain't gonna be a greeter but i still feel like i'm gonna be dibbling and dabbling in some things Do something yeah something yeah. so i don't i don't i don't know I don't think I could. I know I couldn't be a housewife. I know I couldn't. Or a stay-at-home mom. I know I couldn't. I'm still going to have an office. I'm still going to be doing shit. And then, but I'm going to have nannies and a maid or something, you know, but so I can have that time for my children and for my man when he want to come home and just, you know, watch the game or something, even though I don't know what the fuck going on on TV, I'm just still cut it up with him, you know, give him some, some personal time and stuff like that. But I don't know. I couldn't. I don't know. I don't even know what that is. I've never even seen a housewife before. Well, I've seen some, but I don't know. I mean, I've heard of them. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, like real life housewife. In 1930. I've... I mean, you got to be making a lot of money if you want to have a chick that don't work because, I mean, you supporting everything. You feeding everybody, clothing everybody, doing everything. I don't know. I've, I've, I know a couple of people who, um, women who are married that don't, they don't work. And their husbands make all the money. And like this one woman that I know, like she had, they have two kids together and they're younger kids, um, probably like, I don't know, five, six or something like that. And I mean, of course, I don't know people's household, but it doesn't seem like she's like the woman that's, even though like, of course, she's cooking and cleaning and taking care of the household, like she's, you know, she'll do something every now and then, like she'll start a new hobby and she's doing this right now. You know, I feel like uh, it's not as much like as like Mary I feel Kate like, Avon, yeah, uh, something like that. Paparazzi woman, yeah. So okay. I feel like even like today in times, it's not really like no income whatsoever. Home. Yeah, like sit home and just cook, clean, run around with the kids. Like I feel like housewives now they're doing you know the cooking and cleaning. You know how much that dude is making? Um, I mean, I don't know, but I don't think it's like crazy money like i don't think it's crazy money they live a, a pretty good life i mean it's not like they have it's like definitely the, possible you know biggest it, it you know, things going on but they live yeah. they, yeah. they live comfortably they live comfortably they don't have to worry about anything their kids are well taken care of you know he literally comes and gives her his paycheck like you big she he comes home give her his paycheck let her pay the bills and whatever monies is left 
she would give, okay, well, this is what was left. You get this, and this is what I'm going to do with the rest of it, like that type of thing. So literally, she's masterminding everything, taking care of the household, letting him do whatever. But she's doing, you know, things herself. And like I said, it seems to work for them. Like I said, it seems like they're, you know, they don't have no worries. I mean, they, they can go with their want. They buy what they want, and it's not, you know, anything like, I don't think she feels like a housewife in a traditional sense. Like, I just got to sit home and take care of the kids. Like, she has a life outside of doing that. She just doesn't clock I in. I see to where like, Ken nah. Campbell said those women or men are the ones that step out the most. I will say this right here. Um, housewife. I have heard a lot, like, listen to other podcasts and people calling in and stuff, whatever. Those women aren't fulfilled. They aren't happy. They feel like, oh, I had a career, then I got married, and I had kids, and it just made more sense. We saved thousands of dollars. If I was the primary caregiver, but I want to go back to school. I want to be a nurse. I want to be this. I want to be so Loki, those women, housewives aren't happy. Like, no, not at all. They're not happy. They bored. They're bored. I, mean, not, I don't want to say bored <laughs> because they have plenty of things to do. It's just not. Like what Whitney was saying about hobbies and stuff, like they still trying to find something to grasp and hold on to, like even if they just get out the house from around the kids or the husband, even if it is to go set up to sell paparazzi, even if it is to go to the YMCA or the gym or something. And honestly, you can I be think busy and be bored. The hardest, that's that's true. the hardest job want. is being a, a housewife because you gotta yeah, you gotta stay up, you gotta still be fine, you gotta still, you gotta do a that's lot right. of stuff. You gotta I think it is harder being like a wife versus being like the girlfriend or something like that like you have to constantly make sure your household is in order it's different when you're just dating you got your apartment over here he got his apartment or house over here and hey y'all see each other on the weekends or come by cook let's go to the move whatever but when y'all in one household and now you like okay now we got to maintain the structure you are on go like you gotta have a report card and also another thing with um being a housewife and stuff uh, I need an allowance. <laughs> I need an allowance. Like, I want a certain amount of money that I need every week. If, like, if I was to do something like that, you know. See, that's why you got to have your own money. And TJ had once, TJ had said in the comments, he said he can't imagine a one-income household. It's like you're already one downsize from being homeless. And, <laughs> hey, and I mean, I don't know about one downside from being homeless, but yeah, if you're- If it was a pandemic- probably if you're i mean outside of like pandemic stuff i mean yeah if you're like the sole provider like you know if anything happens to that one person and the other person is not working like yeah that's going to create uh a lot of problems you know finances and, and relationships and marriages are a big deal so yeah I, I believe like if you only have one person who's making all the money then you know I'm going to be in trouble if something happens, especially yeah, if they're not doing hard anything. Nowadays, especially depending on where you live, like that's not possible unless you're in a different tax bracket. Absolutely. I think, um, I, I think, I think uh, that's if, not the guy, if, if he making what he make, then just let the woman work part time. That where that part time money, that's the extra money. That's like the, the savings, money, like the just in case shit, you know, um, the vacation stuff. Like just let her work part time from home, turn a bedroom into an office, you know things like that it's possible but um so the manifesting love challenge like guys y'all feel like that's just women writing out this list of saying they want to upgrade their lifestyle by using you guys or what let's to an extent, yeah okay and i feel like she was telling people to act your wage you know yeah. what i'm saying like live live within your means date within your means now if you're blessed with somebody who's has all of those qualities. I mean, I'm, there has been plenty of women. There's been, well, I ain't gonna say that, but there's been, there's been plenty of, of opportunities where that has been had to where they've upgraded them because they have had a connection. And he's like, you know, I want to bring you with me. I already have all of this, but I think it's just, based, a lot of people are just blinded by society and blinded by the, the, the very small chance that that can happen when you don't possess those qualities yourself. Like that, I can't remember what that man says, that savage dude, that be talking to the men and women. Kevin, I don't, don't like, want to. I don't want to mention. I don't want to mention his name up here. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. He yeah, on one good video. Good. On one oh, video. Happened, I don't want to mention his name up here because I. I don't. I mean, I want the podcast to get attention. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> but I don't want to get tore down. I don't want to be like, yeah, that no, no, no. Thing. And I wasn't. I, I, I was agreeing with him. I was just saying that he he was talking to. He asked a woman on one video. What is it that you want in a man? Yeah, I'm so. And she she listed all of these 
unrealistic things. She want him to make six figures. She want him to drive hey, a big house and a nice car. Figures. And he was like, and he was like, so uh, where you work? And she you? couldn't like she couldn't answer that. And he's like, you really expect a man? He not even gonna want you if you don't got something going for yourself. Like all these looks would just once you get 40, 50, that's going away. You know what I'm saying? That's basically what I was agreeing with. Like you, you, oh. a lot of women they based off of this. Like I'm fine. I can get a man with money, boo. But it's like when you turn a certain age, what else are you bringing to me? They, and that's what a lot of men with money, financially stable men, men that already got stuff going for themselves, they're looking for that in a mate. Like, what can you bring? Oh, so what? Here? Wait a minute. So, so why we on that day. I didn't mean to cut you off, but why we on you're that? I know it's always really all the time. It's like women. It's always women who have like, I don't want to say who have the standards, but they always make it known of the things that they're looking for. And every time they say, look, these are the things we're looking for, we want this, unrealistic or not, that's what they say that they want. And it's always got like, oh no, you know, we can't do that. Or, you know, that's Jared. <laughs> I can't with you. <laughs> <Y'all> Why? <might> <laughs> Like they say, like, you know, like you just mentioned, like a, a well-established guy who already has money or whatever, he's looking like, what can you bring to the table? So not just looking to her to say, what can you bring? Like say, oh, I can bring this, I can bring that. What are you looking for? Like, what are you looking for somebody to bring to the sa- to the table as opposed to saying, you tell me all the things that you can bring and I'm going to tell you yes or no if that ain't what I'm looking for. Like what type of things? There's that absolutely no. I very, oh, I very rarely hear I mean, sometimes I do, but I feel like it's kind of very vague. It's very vague when when I hear guys mention, you know, they, they want somebody, you know, like you said, you got to be bringing something to the table. Well, what does bringing something to the table look like for a guy when he's looking for a, a partner? Guys, for, aren't that for me, like, for me we partner. don't. All she got to do is look good and not be That's about it. That's it. <laughs> okay, first see, of that's all, what I'm saying. Uh-uh. That's what I'm saying. Because nah, I don't care how that, fine you are. If you're not mentally stable, you we got to talk. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't care how fine you are. My that goes just talking you put me, up, like, you Daniel, you'll put up with it for a little bit. Don't act like you wouldn't. You'll put I mean, up with it for a little bit. First couple yeah, dates, but it's just like you come at me with a knife, like we gotta talk. <laughs> Why? Oh, ain't no talking. We, we out. We done. <laughs> we out. A knife? I, I, I think men, <laughs> I think it's vague because I don't know. This is for me. Like, I don't know exactly precisely what I'm looking for until I find it. That makes sense. So that's the reason why it's more so like, not necessarily what specifically are you bringing to the table, but like we're looking to see if the qualities that you have, are they compatible with my qualities? Are they compatible? Like, are, are we compatible in that area? That's just the way that I look at it. Let that makes sense? Let me, let me say this real quick. Uh, I'm going to use myself as an example. I got two men up here. Y'all can help me out. I want to flip it a little bit, but also kind of touch on what Daniel was saying. Um, first off, the manifestation of love, or whatever. People do vision boards all the time for like their life and their goals and things that they want. Yeah. So I can't low key think that the manifesting love is kind of like a vision board for what you want in a man. I'm gonna say that. Now, the other side of that I want to say is um, I kind of feel like I got my life together. If we go by the Kevin. Samuel's guy I know if he, if he write me I know my one thing that I need to change you know I, I know what I need to do you know or two things or whatever but okay so what people tell what y'all guys tell women like me and Courtney and Whitney is that we need to give guys a chance right you never know you just gotta give them a chance you gotta so I have a lot of things going on for myself, but I don't boast and brag about it until it's time for me to do that. So am I supposed to give? Because y'all, we talking about the value of uh, the guy, the girl wants a six-figure guy, but the guy, he's nowhere, or the girl's nowhere near that. Her account is in the negative. So now let's use me. I'm good. I'm I'm straight. So am I supposed to talk to the guy that um, is Absolutely on Absolutely Absolutely but, not. But y'all always, That's the thing that Whitney was saying. Y'all always beat this up about we need to give a guy a chance. You need to, you never know where it's going to go. Like right now I'm talking to a guy who doesn't have a car. He keeps talking about not working for the white man, but he's an entrepreneur. But yeah. I respect that. There you go. Don't work for the white man. 
<laughs> I knew Jerry was about to say so. Saying, <laughs> he, ain't working, he ain't working for the white playing. man. He's actually working for a Hispanic man, actually. So, <laughs> okay. And I'm like, you're not an entrepreneur if you're still having to go to this person and they're paying you money, cash money under the table. Then he has two children with two different moms. And he mm-hmm. clearly don't like them, you know, because they're bees, as according to him. Like, he just got a lot. And then he doesn't have a permanent place to stay. Every time we FaceTime, he's at a different family member or relative's house. And so I'm like, but he does. That situation is different. Well, that situation have- is more so. This is good qualities. <sighs> okay. One thing that really attracted me, not like physically or whatever, but he's a, a man's man. He's a hands on guy. Like, he, he like, do shit like right if, if the world was the crumble or whatever like he'd be out there chopping wood he know how to fix shit like he know how to do that like he hunts how he's old is he 30 oh yeah and that's nothing he's 30 and no he, and he's really no. a great he's really somebody a, else said run eric said run no <laughs> i mean no. If, he, if he's not no. if, like he don't have no place to live like he's he don't got no place to stay i mean the thing is he, okay so he's I a whole tech because he was saying, I was like, well, where do you live at? He was saying, he was saying, like, I don't know if y'all seen Greenleaf. It's kind of low-key Greenleaf. Yeah, I see, yeah. Like, like, it's a family estate. Like, they have a, like, his grandma had 13 kids. And so, of course, the kids had kids. So, it's a big family like that. So, the house that he's staying in is six rooms, and he stays in one of the rooms. But he could have something happened, because every time he called me, because I keep putting him on the block list, because I told him we're not compatible or whatnot. But uh, he called me for, he tricked me, he called me for a different number. And he's always at somebody else's house. And I'm like, where you at now? But I try not to go into that because I know black men already have a lot going on in society. So you don't need a stranger like me uh, saying, why you ain't got this? Right? Like nagging him, you know, because we always get accused of nagging somebody. So my thing is like, I was told what, well, maybe you should give, his cousin said, give my cousin a chance. You're the type of woman that he needs to help him get on his feet. And that, that offends uh, me. That offends me. I'm like, can I Why say something I real quick? Okay, go I'll save him. Can I say something real quick? Sure. Um, I my only opinion on that is more so. You know all this about him mm-hmm. already. That is his chance. But the thing is, where do you, it? I think when people say give him a chance, is if a man is if a man or woman is not where they want to be in life, and they know they're not where they want to be in life and you see them trying to make a better life, then there's a difference. Unless you just, you know, just staying stagnant. Then it's like, okay, how long have you been doing this? How long have you been not wanting to That's work for the, the thing, white man? That's the right. How long have you been? So my whole thing is not necessarily giving him a chance as far as dating him. My thing is have those difficult conversations. And if he can't answer those conversations, then you'll be able to see like, okay, you don't got nothing going for yourself. Because it's just like me. Like I, I don't, I'm not where I want to be in life. But there's one thing that nobody can ever take away from me is the fact that I'm trying to make a better life. And you will yeah. be able to plainly see without me telling you I'm trying to make a better life. You'll be able to plainly see that I'm trying. Well, and the ambition the, is there. You know well, what I'm saying? The, if, if don't, you know what I'm saying? He does get, because he's a, he's a black cowboy. And I would have never believed him. Oh, you start, oh, okay, yeah. I, I would have totally never believed him cowboy. until... <laughs> Until I saw this show called Yellow Yellowstone or Yellow, yes, Yellowstone. So I've been on the phone, like I got like screenshots, you know, just you know, he do he's a a, a handler, like a, a a ranch handler or whatever. Like he feed the horses, he train the horse, he do stuff like that. So he does do shit that I would never anticipate somebody doing. Like he does that, but because I'm a business minded person, I'm like. Yo, you can you can do this yourself, like still work for them, but have your side gig. But he's so angry and so mad at the world, like he won't listen. Cause he's now he's at a different cousin's house. And so when we was talking this morning, they was like, I was trying to ask him about I was asking him about something. And he just flipped out and I was like, Oh, I can't do this. Cause I like peace and blessings. Like my life is amazing. And like arguing over the phone I'm like you're not about to give me no stroke or no heart attack or nothing and so his his, his, his it was just can I ask you something sure so I remember when we were talking when you were telling me about this not on this but when you were telling me about this I remember you saying the hands-on thing <laughs> no I got no cowboy fetish <laughs> <laughs> sorry so, um, 
what's it called? Um, I remember you telling me about the hands-on thing, but I do not remember you saying any other qualities, like good qualities about him. So I was wondering, was that the only thing that attracted you to him? The hands-on, um, I do feel like he got a good work ethic, but like, I just know he got, you... go ahead. I know he has anger issues. Cause like it, when it went, when it boiled down to it, cause his mom died when he was younger. And so he was like, oh, she was the black sheep of the family. Now I'm the black sheep of the family. And I'm like, because I'm, I'm, I think you're 30. Like, you should have something. Because even if a parent That's dies, if, you, if a parent dies, that should make you go harder. That should make that, you, yeah. like, do what the fuck you need to do. Because you, because mm -hmm. most of the time people do take the insurance money. You know, family do take insurance money. So you may not talk to those families. But I, I there's just no excuse. But I just hate the fact that people always telling women, we need to give these guys a chance when they, they're not even on your level. And then if I say, and I, I said, I said, listen, in the nicest way possible, I said, we're not compatible. I need you. We're just not. And so his family was like, that's exactly, you need to help him do that. And I can help him. I could help him because I said, with the, during the summer, I want to bring the, the horses down to Marion and, you know, have children do what they need to do. You know, I could help him, but I don't even want to do business with the nigga no more. Yeah, so, Eric, Eric said that, something I that I was saying. This is the reason why I asked you how old he was. Was Eric. the simple fact that the Negro is thirty years old, and this is his status. And I feel like that take that 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 takes a a, a big toll because if you at some at some age in life, like you got to know, like you got to do what you got to do before you got to do what you yeah. want to do. You know what I'm saying? So like, if you if you're not mature enough to have that mindset, then you don't need. He doesn't deserve a woman of your caliber. You know what I'm saying? That's why people in the chat is saying you need to run. Like you 30 years old, bro. Like you 30 years old, and you still like. And and it's, everybody has their situations, but you 30 years old. What are you doing about it? That's yeah. the reason why I'm at. I asked you, what does he have? Does he have something going for himself? Rather, I don't care if you go with hands. What are you doing to make that to, to make that your business? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. You what are you doing to make the fact if you can't afford you know to you know, have exactly. a place to live and stuff? You don't if you can't, that if you can't afford yourself, can I come pick him up? And that's a he's in man, he's like no. he's in like Hilton Head. Like he's like I said no, baby. That's that's like six uh, hours, three you, hours, you need to six be alone hours, and get his stuff together before no. he deals with chicks. No. Yeah, like no. Jared said, you got to, you got to, I mean, you, if you, if you're in that situation, like, if, like, like Daniel said, everybody has their things that they're going through, but that's when you really got to look at yourself. Like, if you have those things going on, do you really need to be worrying about trying to add somebody? Because I, th I think yeah. sometimes people fail to realize when you're talking to somebody and bringing them into your world, <laughs> like... You need to have yourself together. Like that's not just saying you just talking to somebody and they're gonna come <laughs> in. The day. No, you got to do more than that. No, ain't no pressure. Um, TJ, TJ Taylor said, "I feel like you're reaching with these good qualities just to make excuses for him." I didn't no. want to say it. I didn't want to say it. But <laughs> this, he, this, yeah, this uh, the thing. This the thing. I do. I do look at things like that because I am um what they call a prepper. Like I looking out if Jared comes back because we lost him. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I am a prepper. Like, I believe in, like, you know, having preparation. Like, I do believe, like, if something was to happen in the world, like, you, because I'm, I'm not one of those type of women. I'm not a feminist. I'm not one of those type of women. But, oh, women, we're equal. We can do everything a man can do. No, the fuck we cannot, because I'm not cutting no grass. I'm not breaking no yard. I'm not, I'm not doing that stuff, you know. I, ha I have a landscaper for that. I just want to point out that doesn't What I was about to say, like, just because, just because. <laughs> what you say, Courtney? So I just want to point out that doesn't mean women can't do it. That just means Ashley ain't going to do it. Granted, I ain't going to cut uh, that. Right. right, absolutely. But like I said, I'm not a feminist. I'm not one of those women that say women can do everything a man can do. We can't. Physically, we can't. And I, I just use simple stuff that's related to me, like cutting grass and stuff. Like, who climbing up a tree? Who going to be a uh, hanging line? Stuff? When you pass by road construction, do you see women out there? You see men. You know, there's so, no women that are not in uh, road construction, right? But who's out there? Men. All right, so nasty let's in this chat. I just want to say that y'all nasty. <laughs> uh, yeah, chat. I want to address that. Like, <laughs> I will. I will say he has been trying, and he, Lord knows, he was trying. He was like, "You just need." I don't know why guys think I just need a little bit of dick. You know, I don't. I'm good. You know, they be trying, but anyway. Let's go on. Yes, Eric, uh, I agree with that, Eric. 
I always would say? agree with that. He said physically, no, but women will always be superior beings. Yeah, I agree. And I will always, I will always agree with that. I will always agree with that. Just a simple fact that I can't take childbirth. I can tell you that now. I get a paper cut and want to cry. You know what I'm saying? Like I can't, <laughs> I can't take the pain that y'all can endure, and no man can take the pain that y'all can endure. You know what I'm saying? So like y'all will always be superior. Oh, I agree with that. Shook. Listen, I listen. That's more of an after darts type of conversation because I actually did converse with Courtney. Know about this? I actually did converse with a guy who the finger in the movie. Like he liked, <laughs> you know. Okay, yeah, that's after hours. Yeah, that's after hours. You know. So let's move on, on to uh, topic number four. I don't think we're gonna get to five. That's but so funny. Derek's back, but he's still connecting. I think. Right. Okay. So. <laughs> All right, topic number four, which is, can we take rejection? Do you be like, okay, that's fine. Or do you need, hello, I said, do you like, be like, okay, or do, move on? Or does, does it bother you so much that you continue thinking about it? Like, can you take rejection? Like, how are you on your breakup thing? Like, matter of fact, we're going to tie it all into question five so we can wrap it up. So, can you take rejection? Like, if your relationship is over, do you need closure? Like, are, are you like, you know what? I knew this was coming to an end. I agree. We don't. This is over with. Or, how do you want to end it? Do you need a text message? A phone call? A sit down? What do you What do? you mean? Like, re- like relationship yeah, rejection? Oh, you mean like somebody just, you try to shoot your shot and somebody rejected you? Like, with- yeah, we talk about two different things. All right, well, I, okay, well, then I'm going to separate the question because I was trying to ha- wrap it up into one. So, yeah, rejection as far as, like, um, because what happened was uh, I saw a news article in Conway. I don't know if y'all saw it when I shared it, but uh, a girl, DoorDash girl in Conway, South Carolina, she was um delivering whatever it was on her way back, and then a guy pulled up, and he was like, yo, uh, let me get your number. And she was like, oh, I got a boyfriend. And he was like, flash the gun. And he was like, let me get your number. And I'm... And, she gave him her phone. He put it in her phone. Then he gave it back to her. And he was like, and if you got a man, I'll beat it. Like, she, he thought, I'm like, which me and my cousin, Quincy, I tagged him. So I don't want nobody thinking that's my man and that. That's my cousin. But me and him kind of had a conversation about that. Oh, no. People be trying to be in business. Um, people be, um, we had a conversation about this a couple weeks ago. And a lot of guys, <laughs> what the fuck? A lot of guys, um, hey. <laughs> a lot of guys be thinking like I, w- women we're over exaggerating when we say guys can't take no they be like oh. uh, yeah but honestly guys don't like when women say no or I got somebody but well, we can just be friends like nigga I just told you I got somebody like what what you want you want me to get my ass beat because you want to call me or text me like guys can't take rejection. So how are y'all with rejection? Like, are you? Um, I'll go. I'll just go ahead and get this out there. Um, I don't think this is anything that's gonna be surprising. I can't take rejection. I can't. <laughs> that's that's one of the big reasons why I don't shoot my shot. I can't. I'm the type of person where I'll get shot down and I'll be thinking about it for the next two weeks, and I'm like, what's wrong with me? <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't do it. But that's because I'm sensitive in general. So I just, I just, I can't do it. But so I. Part of- but well, with that being said, so when guys do shoot their shot at you and you reject them, how do you think they take it? I mean, don't get me wrong. No, 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 no. I'm not <laughs> saying that they're not, you know, putting themselves out there. I'm not saying that, you know, they probably don't feel the same way, but I'm just saying I don't do it because I can't take it. I think the type of guys, because, you know, women get killed for rejecting guys. Oh, so, yes. Yeah. So, like, I, I, like, if you can't, if a guy can't take rejection, I don't think they should be shooting their shot. If you want, if you get to the point where you want to kill somebody because they said no, like, you, you can reevaluate some things. But, I mean, I'm sure guys feel just as, you know, as shitty as the next dude, but I just, <laughs> me personally, I can't do it. I just can't. How do y'all take rejection, guys? Like, how, well, I don't, well, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Jared, if y'all how, how do you take rejection? Like, or do you or do you do the rejecting? I mean, now rejecting is, I mean, you get rejected sometimes, sometimes you do the rejecting, but if you're the one, you know, you hollering at somebody and she say, nah, she ain't really feeling you, you just gotta move on, like, instantly. I don't do the whole lingering, you know, like, oh, you got a man, though, or can we be friends? Yeah, I hate oh, that. <laughs> hey, all right, well, hold it down, and that's it, and I leave. 
Well, hold it down. Exactly. I agree. I definitely agree. Um, for me, it was hard to take reject. It was really hard to take rejection, like when I was younger. Um, but growing up, you know what I'm saying. Now it's just like you miss 100 percent of the shots you don't take. You know what I'm saying? Like I ain't go. I might not go 100 percent from the field, but that one make could be the game winner. You know what I'm saying? So like, I, I'm gonna shoot that thing. You know what I'm saying? Now I just, I just, I just don't care. You know, and, and and it's not that I don't care whether I get the girl or not. It's more so like rejection is familiar. It's familiar. It's more so for me. Like I'm more be would be concerned with succeeding rather than getting turned down. If that makes sense. Wait, In some cases, you said rejection is familiar, meaning like it happens familiar. a like, lot. It, not that it happens a lot, but it. it the, I'm not. I'm not married, so <laughs> obviously. <laughs> more time I've been than- rejected more times than than I've I've actually gotten a girl. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I'm willing to take that shot because like I said, the shot, that one shot could be the game winner. I could be talking to my wife and not know that. And if I'm letting my insecurities get the best of me and God sitting here like, "Listen, this is your wife like here." And it's like, "Nah, I ain't going to do it cuz I'm scared." I'm going to be single for the rest of my life. You know what I'm saying? So like sometimes you just got to take the chance. I mean, I'm uh, as, as a dude, you're going to take a lot of L's hollering at girls. You know what I'm saying? Some of them going to be feeling you, some of them not. But you just got to try. That's it. That's all you yeah, can do. Yeah. Try. That's just what it is. Sometimes you can be like, what's up? And they'd be like, no. And I'd be like, all right, bet. <laughs> take it easy. I feel like you got to have something else going on in order for you to like take it that personal where you do all of these extra things. Like you really have to have something going on for you to be that serious about rejection it's got to be you, it's got to be it's got to be something within yourself because my thing is i don't know you enough to really really feel a certain type of way i want to get to know yeah. you. i want to i want to see where life is going to take us but i don't know you enough to be like really really hurt when you're saying i'm just not interested there's i don't think there's maturity in that but it happens you know so like i i've, I've like does. i've like literally had to just to keep from anything escalating or getting worse than what it is like i'll just literally have to give somebody a fake number just so they can like get out of my face and leave me alone because they start to like i'm gonna tell you where i'm gonna tell you where to mess up is with that because women like persistency and they think that all women like persistency and they think that women like say no no at first like i'm saying for some women oh okay yeah but it's just Mm -hmm. like you know sometimes you want to just i mean Honestly, I mean, it, it ain't right, but it's just like uh, the, another the way women dress, you know, we have to be conscious of all these things, but it's not because yeah. it's right. It's because like there's things that could happen if not like if I, you know, just be like, I can't just be like, oh, no, if somebody's just like, I, I which I feel like you have a right to if somebody say, you know, let me get your number. I want to get to know you more. I have every right to say, no, I'm not interested keep it moving but sometimes you really can't do that because guys take that to heart some guys take that to heart and literally for whatever reason internally that they feel like they want to lash out like some guys really try to like you know like like be about it yeah, yeah. They're like bitch you ain't all that anyway yeah, like, like name calling name calling all kind of stuff yeah, they like, just even with the calling you were saying where like you'll just give a fake number so they got your face Remember that stalking guy? I don't know if you tuned in for that episode or if you were on it, but remember I was telling you guys about the guy that I gave my number to at the job I was working and he literally was stalking me after I was like, you know. Oh, wait, I think I do remember you mentioning that. Yeah, so him, he called me right after I gave him my number to make sure I gave him the right number. Yeah, I was going to mention that. I was going to say, I was going to say, Whitney, sometimes that can be dangerous. So just... I, I see yeah, it can, it can, it can be dangerous, but if I'm giving you a fake number, I ain't standing around to, to listen to you all. <laughs> like, I'm literally, I'm engaging in, in whatever the conversation is, getting in my car, oh, but you ain't giving me a number. Okay, 800 and then I'm I'm going, like, I'm not even staying around to even let you give me a number. Like, well, see, I was at work, so I mean... <laughs> yeah, like, and it's, it's crazy that that has to happen. Like, I don't, I, I mean, I just don't understand, like, why does it have to be that serious? You know? Yeah, Eric has said in, in the comments that um I can't count how many times I had to play boyfriend to a stranger because S was getting out of hand. Yeah. Literally, like know. literally the open mic I hosted last week, there was a dude outside with a female and he was clearly drunk, clearly inebriated. And we had to kind of just be like, hey, you want to come inside? Let's go inside, take a shot. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just to get him away. Oh, like, the girl, you, know you, had, you had to do that to the, the girl. girl. 
Oh, you had yeah, to like, save like, her. Okay. Had to, yeah, because it's just men. Men, yeah, men really like. Yeah, they really that's the same way. Like if it was like this, the same way if it was like let's say it was a, a night. It was at night, and a female she could be let's say just coming from going out. You know she looks nice. She cannot not even have on anything revealing. She just looks nice. But you have this one female that may be walking to her car. You have these group of guys over here. Like she should be yeah. able to walk to her car without feeling like she has to be harassed. But because yeah. Yeah. a lot of times that's not the case, you have like all of these guys hounding this one person. Sometimes I know X said he played it like sometimes guys have to even step up and just be like, you know, let let this woman get yeah. to her car without y'all yeah. like being all up on her. Like it's it's really like yeah. those situations when sometimes I say, or a lot of times I say, you know, a lot of times men will say, you know, we had it hard. You know, you don't know how it is going out here and we come back home and we just need somebody to, you know, be our peace. Those are the type of situ situations that we always have to deal with. Like you can't go to your car. You, it, it's, you know, something might happen. You can't reject the guy because he might try to flash a gun and your life is threatened now. Those are the type of things that's yep. like so difficult because it's so simple and it should be just take your L and move, but it's not like that. And I don't and understand why, because for me, it's more... Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I think Jared was trying right, to talk, but I don't know if something's on his mind. <laughs> I don't know if my friend is muted or what. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like you were trying to talk before, but your mouth was moving, but nothing. I couldn't hear nothing. No, I'm saying flashing a gun just to, like, flashing a gun out of, out of anybody for, to get a phone number is pretty psychotic. Like, someone's wrong with that guy. He's not normal. That's not a normal <laughs> dude. Not yeah, normal. I believe that. Yeah, they charged him with, like, robbery because by him taking her phone and, so, like, but he did give it back to her. But they charged him with a couple things. His mugshot, I shared it on my page um, because I was like, this one. FNS stuff, but you know. Okay, Courtney was saying something too. What were you saying, Courtney? No, I was just gonna say like um how Whitney was saying like you know a guy will have to step up like a group of guys standing there and the girls walk to her car walk into her car and then they start hounding her. A guy has to step up to save her and stuff like that. It's the whole thing is still kind of just excuse my language, but it's still fucked up because they're not gonna respect her. They're gonna respect the guy first, and that's just yeah. That's so and that's still messed up. That's, still that's messed so up. crazy to me. And for, they're gonna look at you. Yeah, but I, I was thinking like also too, Ashley, like before you like split it up because that was like if it's just like a kind of you know you're talking to somebody, but as far as like rejection, like like how do you handle? I guess like breakups too. I guess that was kind of more of the question. Yeah, like we're gonna. Yeah. What were you saying, Jerry? I wasn't saying nothing. Oh, okay. All right. So uh, I would like we're gonna wrap that up. That fourth question up, um, but I am happy that guys, y'all are actually acknowledging that there's some fuck boys out here that do stuff like that. And step when you do see it, step up to the plate, you know, try try to save her. No, I'm always step up. I can't stand that stuff. But um, the last question, um, which is, do you need closure? Now, this is more of a relationship. Um, I I think some of us are more like. We don't need the friendship. I know Jerry said he's like, I don't, because I think me and Daniel agreed on this like last week. Like, if it's over with, it's over with. Like, we don't have to do the hey, how are you? You know, um, type of thing. So closure with your your exes. If if it's not going good, y'all know if y'all on the verge of breaking up, how do you want the closure to be done? Do you feel like you need a face-to-face, -face, a sit down? You accept the text message, you accept FaceTime. Like, how do y'all want? closure in a relationship how do you want to break up i'll say face to face face to face what if that doesn't happen like what if you were talking to somebody they break up with you and they just do it over text message don't give you any reason why they just said you know it's over i don't want to be in a relationship anymore like how would you handle that type of like because that's rejection like they don't they broke up with you i mean it'll hurt but you just i mean if they're refusing to, to meet with you you just got to take what they give you and, and try to move on with that. Cause I had a situation in my last like actual relationship. We broke up, but it was, it was, it wasn't on like horrible terms. It wasn't nothing crazy that happened that made us break up. So we talked a couple months after we broke up and had a real good sit down and it was great. Now I had another situation where it ended terribly. It was a huge, ridiculous situation and closure happened for me that same day after, after that situation happened. Right. You know what I'm saying? I knew I was done right then. Yeah, that's how it happens sometimes. Like, 
the whatever happens it's just like I don't need to have any more closure. Like you show me like what was up. You show me how you was going to handle things. Like I feel like sometimes when people ask for closure, they're, they're open it up for people to justify what they've doing, what, what they've done, or they're looking to see like, to make sure, Oh, it, make sure it is not anything with me. Even if that person had an issue with what happened or has an issue with you, that's on them. Like it's not for you to try to figure out like, why does this person not want me? Why did this person? And I know a lot of times it is that way, especially like after breakups and relationships. But, you know, at, at one point in time, I felt like, you know, even if it wasn't like relationship wise, like let's say I was just talking to a guy or whatever. And we were like, you know, conversing a lot or even may have been going out or whatever. And for whatever reason, it stopped. I used to be the type of person that would wonder well, what, why this happened or reaching out like, hey, you know, we used to text all the time. Da, 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 this happened, this happened. And I just feel like, you know, sometimes you just got to take it for what it is. Like Jerry said, like it, it, you know, just move on. Like you can try to want like, to. It, I mean, I think sometimes it's good to like, oh, I wonder why, you know, maybe it was some outside things that happened or, you know, something they'd have been dealing with would be nice to know. But I mean, I don't think it's necessary. I mean, like once somebody, I feel like that should, it should be that way, not even just in relationships, sometimes friendships or relationships that you have with other people. Like sometimes, I mean, closure is not the best because I feel like if you're so hung up on getting closure, you're not going to really be able to move on. Like if you are a type of person who needs closure, you're never going to be able to move on from relationships that are dead to you. Like people that you need to cut off or people that are no longer good for you. If you're constantly wondering, you know, why this person doesn't do this or why they don't like me or why did the friendship end or why did the relationship end? Like you're never going to be able to fully like move on with your life. Right. I agree with Being that. Being the closure should be a requirement. Um, but I mean, of course, you know, it's better. I think it also depends on how long the situation was. I know me and my ex were together for eight years. And I would say that closure was needed, but it wasn't required. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, because uh, I mean, that's almost a decade of my life. So like, right. I needed yeah. that closure. But if I didn't, if I wasn't able to have it, I don't think that it would have like messed me up or I would have felt like I couldn't move on or anything else like that. But you know, we, you converse with people like a few times over the phone, like maybe you're meeting someone and you meet them a few times and maybe y'all just stop talking. Like what is there, what, what is there to close? You know what I mean? Like, so. Being the salty that I am, um, I agree, Clo closure is not required, but I would, me personally, I would like to have closure in a, uh, in, in a real relationship, not the talking stage, not, you know what I'm saying? I'm talking about if we're in a relationship, I kind of need closure. Not, not, it's, it's more so because if at one point in time we were in either strong like or love, something changed, you know what I'm saying? And it's, I need to figure out if it's something that I did just so I can learn from that. You know what I'm saying? Because it's always going to be, if you don't get closure in some situations, I really feel like you know, closure is like a Band-Aid. You can potentially bleed on that next relationship if you don't get that closure about what is going on. You know what I'm saying? As far as, like, long relationships. So I kind of need, like, to know, okay, if there was one day, there was one period of time where you really, really were feeling me, you was in love with me, and now that's not the case. So either something I did change, somebody else came along and changed that, I kind of need to know that. You know what I'm saying? Because if it's like, hey, your attitude towards me changed and it turned me off. Now I know, okay, I need to pay more attention to my attitude in the future. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, it's just certain, that's the reason why I request closure in substantial relationships, whether it's friendships or romantic relationships, yeah. uh, family, because it's just like, why don't you mess with me no more? What did I do to make you not want to communicate with me? Yeah. And then now it's more so like, OK, this is what happened. This is what turned me off. And so now I'm like, OK, well, I can take that and apply that to my future. Yeah. So, yeah, I need I need that because I there's a lesson there somewhere that I need to learn. And me, I'm, I, I consider I, I'm an overthinker. So it's like now it's like, OK, maybe everything I did was just messed up. Exactly. So like, I can't even I, I can't even I don't even want to get into another relationship because I feel like if I leave the toilet seat up, she's going to leave. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like I can't, I can't think like that. I can't go on thinking like that. So yeah, I kind of, I kind of need. Yeah, I understand closure. wanting closure, but I guess my thing is too like, you have to be 
be able to be okay with not getting closure and being able to yeah of course that. i agree that's like why i say it's not required want, you want i mean I everybody would want to know like if something like if like you said if you were in a relationship with somebody you know 10 years 11 years or you know you had a friendship going on for whatever reason that you're no longer friends no more you're no, no longer in a relationship of course you're going to be wondering like dang you know we spent all this time together we messed with each other like this whole time and now all of a sudden it's just you don't want to mess with me no more. So I understand like wanting to have that closure. I guess my thing is don't always expect it or always like cling to it because mm-hmm. I just feel like that, mm-hmm. like even what you just saying, you're an overthinker and like you're all like when you move on, you're going to be constantly thinking like, oh, well, I, I wonder if it was this that messed it up or this that messed it up. Like I feel like sometimes if you know what you did in a relationship, let's say you know that you did nothing wrong. And this person may have had whatever going on, whatever. Like, if you know that you didn't do anything wrong or you don't feel like there was, you know, anything bad on your part, not saying that you can't own your stuff, but at the same time, like, I don't feel like you should be racking your brain trying to figure out what was but it's it. Not, what, I don't think it's always about whether I think I did everything right. Because there's been plenty of situations that I have been in where I right. thought I was doing everything right. You know what I'm saying? But I'm still learning and I'm still learning how to love and I'm still learning women. So it's like, I need to know there is this certain situation. God puts people in your life. For a reason I see. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, that's the reason why in that situation, I'm like, okay, for the woman you have for me, for the woman that you have created me for, there's going to be certain things because he gives us the power of free will. We can mess up what God has for us. You know what I'm saying? So like we, for me, it's more so like, okay, this could be a similar situation to the future and now I know how to handle it. Yeah, I get you know what, what you're saying. saying. And I, I, so I didn't mean, like, that, like I didn't mean that it's like, you know, I didn't do anything. Like, I know I did everything right. I mean, everything mm-hmm. right because, you know, like you said, certain situations, like you are unaware of like the things that you may have done. Right. But, you know, if you're constantly asking the person to like, you know, like, did I do something? And they just like not give you anything. And, you know, oh, that's just... when you walk away. Don't be crazy. Yeah. Right. I'm just yeah. saying, I, I'm going to still ask for it. Like, hey, can we talk about this? And if they don't respond or if they're like, no, I'm good. I'm going to be like, I'm going to wash yeah. my hands up. Yeah. Because I think that's you. that's my thing with it, too. Like, I'm yeah. gonna probably like ask, like, what's up? Like, what happened? But if from that, if you continuously like to, to, to not want to speak on it or you continuously like just try to act like nothing happened, then from that point on, I feel like I could just take my hands off of it. Because you tried, you attempted to get the closure. That person didn't want, want to, for whatever reason, explain what happened, what didn't happen. I feel like at that point on, move on. I don't feel like it should be the person like still trying to continuously work at it to get closure, get closure. If you reached out, tried to one or then two times, then that should, yeah, just, just let, let that go. Happen. Yeah, that's just what it is. You know what I'm saying? Do you think that you? I was trying to ask Daniel a question. Okay. Do you think that you may feel like you need closure from certain people? Are there some situations where you wouldn't care for the closure? Because like listening to you, Um, if you cheat on me, I don't need no closure. I don't need nothing from you. That tells me everything. That goes back two episodes ago with my my first episode. If you if you if you commit any type of infidelity with me. I don't need that because the simple fact of the matter is at the beginning of the relationship, this is the warning. So when you actually, you know what I'm saying, cheat on me, it's more so like, okay, then that's good. Or if I felt like, if I felt like this relationship has been over and we're just going through the motions, I don't think I'll necessarily need that closure. It's more so if it's sudden for me. Well, let me, let, me, let me piggyback off of what Courtney said about your the cheating thing. So even if she cheated, right? You still don't want to know, like, why, like, was it sexually? Like, you still don't want to know, like, well, was I not doing enough? Was I not, like, where where was I lacking? Like, you still don't want to know? Because you, for the next woman, so you can better your sex game for the next woman. Yeah, <laughs> like, no. <laughs> <laughs> you still don't want to know. You'd be like, damn, I, I thought I was, I thought we was, you know, I thought we was sexually compatible. Cause think about it. Like if she's cheating, then I mean, I would. Yeah, yeah. Now that I think about it, yeah, I probably still would. I probably, it, I wouldn't need it, but it wouldn't be nice to have. You oh, know what I'm saying? Well, huh? I said I was asking Daniel. So if somebody cheats, if somebody he's with cheats on him, then that's 
automatically she's out. Like they ain't oh, no. Yeah, oh no. Yeah. That. Yeah. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm as strong as that as Jared is on the whole kid thing. Like it <laughs> literally, literally like th- that's a conversation that we have when we, before we even start getting together. That's just me. I can only talk about me. Like, listen, like there's, there's, it, it, I'm I always ask, what's your deal breakers? What is your deal breakers? That's the most important question. One of the most important questions for me. What is your deal breakers? Cause one of my deal breakers are infidelity. I take pride in, in never in being able to say with my head held high that I never cheated a day in my life. And I hold anybody I talk to, to that standard. And if you can't be to that standard, just break up with me. <laughs> then you tell me, okay, you're not doing something for me. You're not doing something for me. And that's where the closure would be nice. What am I not doing? You know what I'm saying? Do you consider emotionally cheating a deal breaker? Yeah, I, I, I do. I do. Ashley, I do. Yes. But what were you saying, Courtney? I'm sorry. No, I was saying, listening to you talk, I kind of want to change my answer because there is like, I think there's a few people that I would probably like how that guy we were just talking to in the comments, Whitney was talking about stalking. Yeah. Like my best friend, like my best friend, if she were to just stop talking to me and stop being like trying to be friends with me, I'd probably stalk her ass. I would have to tell her. <laughs> One, she knows too much. And two, I just, that's- Oh, well, then you got to offer. That's like, oh, that's nah. what I'm saying. Like that's- that's <laughs> <Not> offer. <laughs> when I think of my best friend, like that's, that's my baby. That's, that's, she's my best, best, best friend in the whole wide world. I, I don't think I could literally just let that go. I don't think I could. So basically it sounds like you would kind of be like how men are in relationships, like where they'd be like, okay, baby, you can, you can have it your way. So basically if you saw it, like I was about to butt heads, you just- No, 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 no. We, we, we butt heads all the time. Okay. <laughs> we're, we're, we're apples and oranges. We butt heads all the time. And that's probably why I wouldn't be able to, ha- well, not handle it, but I wouldn't be able to just accept that she's not talking to me. Cause I'm like, we can talk to anything. We can literally- and That's my point. Yeah, and, like um, in real relationships, long relationships, like we're better than this. Yeah, there's been some things we had to get through before. So what happened to where we couldn't get through this? And that's right. kind of what I need to know because Listen, we don't like in, in any relationship. She hadn't answered my phone call for three days. I started calling her job, so I, I, <laughs> I have to wow. say I wouldn't be able to. Huh? I said, wow. Yeah, so I wouldn't. <laughs> Well, one, I was worried about her because I was like, she does not just not answer me. So where the hell is she? I found her, but. As long as you found her, that's what matters. I did. She didn't have her phone, but I was like, it's been three days and I have not talked to her. <laughs> is she okay? You had asked a question, Ashley, um, and I said yes to it, but I don't remember the question. What oh, yeah, yeah. Question? It was about, um, because uh, I said that I haven't physically cheated on a guy that I've dealt with, but I have emotionally stepped out on him, meaning like conversing For me, with somebody else for me emotionally is 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 worse to me than well, we, sexually we, cheating I, well, you know what i'm saying just i ain't gonna go into it i, but feel, like I just feel like that's safe cheating you know? that, that would hurt me that would hurt me more than somebody hopping in the sack because the simple fact of like sex can really be mechanical for some people you know what i'm saying but like what am i not doing to keep your interest you know what i'm saying so that's why it would be like, dang, like you really talking to this man and having a feeling for this other man, you're supposed to be with me. That I feel like that would kind of hurt me and my ego a little more than stepping out physically. Just to answer yeah. your question. Jared is shaking his head. I mean, I agree. Like, I don't want my girl, you know, getting all lovey dovey with another dude, but. That's going to hurt right here. Yeah. Like, oh. I'll be like that. You yeah. miss somebody yeah. else and it ain't one me. question, and we're going to close this out. And this is for the guys. Ladies, y'all don't have to answer. Jared and Daniel, do y'all believe, yes What's Ashley? Do y'all believe, yes or no, that women have work husbands? Yeah. Are you familiar with some that? Of, some of them do. Okay. All right. So we're going to, that's probably going to be one of the next topics, you know, uh, on the next episode. But we're going to close it out. I, the question was um, do you need closure in a relationship? So I think we all agree that, yes, you do need some type of closure. Um, my answer with that is, uh, I'm kind of like a I, I, D, A, D, whatever them acronyms is. I don't give a fuck, per se. But that's just like the invisible force feel around me because, of course, I care. You know, I'm, I'm not a Morion all the time. I got an icebox where my heart used to be. You know, that's just a defense mechanism. You know, but um, I care, but I just don't like to show that I care. So I put up that. I don't care anyway, nigga, you know, but I really do care, you know, but I'm not going to stalk you or nothing. 
physically just online thank god for social media but um thank you everybody for watching what, what was you about to say Cardi? no i was saying i just wanted to clarify i'm only stalking her i'm not stalking everybody <laughs> oh, okay <laughs> um thank you everybody for watching we about to um i'm not closing this live out um because I posted in there, but I'm going to post again real quick. Um, the number that you can call for the after show with the topics that y'all see that we talked about tonight, or if there's something else that you want to talk about, hence the uh, Lori Harvey and um, Lori Harvey and Michael B. Jordan, and then also the Russell and the Sierra, or if you can't do closure, or if you don't, you know, whatever, whatever. But thank you everybody for watching. Um, we're about to do the after show. Um, I'm going to post the number one more time. <laughs> but um so uh i'm gonna post them one more time um and do a brief little intermission like i see I'm it a, on your face girl i'm gonna do a brief little <laughs> two minute intermission like we're still gonna be up here but i'm just gonna give y'all time to like call in dial in and then i have to accept y'all in here okay so um but yeah i'm about to post it again and thank you jared for coming on Yes, Jared. This was good. I enjoyed the conversation. Anytime. My dog. This is dope. As far as like places. One more time. Okay, so I posted it again. Um, like I said, y'all can call in when y'all want to. Um, whoever can stay for the after show, because technically we kind of be having an after show on our own anyway. Per se, yeah. you know. <laughs> but um, but whoever can stay, can stay. If not, um. That's fine. I'll see y'all next time. Brief right. Y'all got a lot out of me. I ain't even want to talk about Lori and Michael no more. <laughs> I, put up my <laughs> oh. uh, I bet they're going to be like, you know, she had said they was going to be talking about Lori and Michael, but I don't even want to talk about it no more. <laughs> How much did he spend on all that all that date they did? You said what? He ran out of oh. the aquarium. A whole That's some thing. thousands. That's some thousand just because she said she liked turtles. It's romantic. Oh, uh, yeah. I love it's that. I don't that was romantic. so romantic. sweet. That was so sweet of him to do that. Yeah. <laughs> what is that noise? I don't know. It might be Jer uh, Jared. You ain't got no headphones? Actually, I do got a headphone. Hold up. That might, that might be change there. Oh, I'm not that sure. might come from I'm going to go get some more wine. I wish I had some of that. I'm drinking wine. Out. Hey, Marie said, Marie said, Jared wasn't playing no games about that child and baby mama. He was a very, very, um, he didn't, he was dead serious. It was no a, budging a on that. Like, look nah. on his face and everything. <laughs> don't like, you nah, do nothing no. with my kid. Don't do nothing with my kid. Don't you hug him. Don't you say, have a good day at school. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. None of that. None of that. Matter of fact, don't even talk to him now. <laughs> What are you saying, Jared? That, that wouldn't make y'all feel no type of way, though? Like, the, the, your kid is hugging and kissing this other person? Well, I um, mean, let me not talk, because I don't want kids to begin with. So let's... Start. Right, yeah. I don't know, Corey. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't bother me. But like I said, I feel like there's just, like, certain boundaries. I don't think you should ever try to make, like, overcompensate to make it, you know, right. like, you're the right. soul, like, the, the father figure. Like, no, future, like, just using the situation from other, earlier... No, like little future has a father. Like I said, I don't know how involved he is and what he does, but you can't. And I feel like I ain't gonna lie. Initially, like when Sierra first got with Russell, I felt like that was a little bit of what she was trying to do, like put Russell over future as a father. Now that oh. I didn't like, I didn't like that because I'm just like, yo, that. like don't sit here and try to like make it, make it, put it out there, like oh, you know. That's that's his father. Like, yeah, you're you're was in a relationship with him and you're progressing towards marriage, but don't sit here and try to make it seem like that's his dad. Like, no, future is his father. Mm -hmm. Right. And I'm I'm big on that because no matter like my parents were divorced for a long time, but they've never down talked each other. At least not yeah. to me. You know what I mean? They never yeah. they never made me feel like someone's less than the other one. Yeah. But coming into like Maybe now don't think about it of... when Jared was just like, I don't know if it was Jared or Daniel, they were just like, you know, Sierra, he was young when they were together so that probably was sierra not even getting that out her system of being over it because i don't know if y'all remember it she kept doing like well when she would do like press and interviews it was like she was always shading future like she was shading future um doing a whole lot of things and like now that i don't think about it, it was probably because like i don't know if she had she i mean of course she was 
with Russell, but I don't know if she had a chance to fully like cut ties and not like have it had that much of an effect on her. That's probably why she was doing all of those things. So I kind of a lot of that a lot of that talk was out of her. I definitely agree with that. Yeah, right. I yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think yeah, a lot so like, of that I don't, talk was I don't agree with stuff like that. Like, don't try to put the other parent down and then essentially like almost turning the kid against the father. Like, you know, Russell, your dad, the future ain't doing that for you. <laughs> but you know, I'm trying to think that's about messed up. if there was a girl in like because I'm trying to think about Jared's perspective perspective in the opposite way because i know it's very unlikely for me to be with someone who doesn't have kids you know what i mean and yeah. so how would i feel trying to connect with someone's child where their mom is feeling the same way jared does i don't think i would be able to handle that that might that would put a big strain on that relationship because well, definitely yeah i i just i don't i don't know if i would be able to handle that if the mom was like because you know i've said i've said before like that would be my biggest thing like that's the only time i would try to be friends with someone whose ex is if they had kids with them that's the only time i'm going to put an effort to be like you know let's talk here and there because eventually your child is going to come into play and i'm going to try to be in that that child's life yeah how can i navigate that knowing that you don't want me to get that close to your child you that's might not even want to get. I don't know. I was about to say you don't want kids. But I say you might not even. Like, you might be fine with just those boundaries. Like okay, <laughs> no, but th that's the thing because it's. I think it's very unrealistic to think that someone wouldn't want the their new partner to not be involved in their child's life. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, but some people do that. Like I saw on the shade room. Like some people say, uh, "We agreed, women. It's always women that be like, we agreed that he wouldn't bring that be around my child. Like how?" Is he not going to bring the girl in there seriously dating? Right. If, if we're seriously well, sometimes dating. they did. Sometimes they do agree just for the simple fact of the man is 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 knows what the baby mama is capable of. And it's like, you, I'm trying not to TMZ have you make my pictures. life miserable. You know what I'm saying? When TMZ I mean, I get that. I just for me, I just feel like the type of man that I would end up with wouldn't want that. I don't think, and, and then I, I think that's the point Jared was making earlier was yeah. like if you if you don't know if you can handle that don't put yourself in that situation and don't put yourself in the situation to have kids with somebody who's not your wife you right. know what but, I'm saying well, like we understand we well, understand divorce it, we understand divorce yeah. that's what yeah. I'm saying we you understand divorce we understand but at that moment in time we agree at that altar that this is going to be a forever thing yeah you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying we agree well, things happen. Thing, my parents that's got not divorced. a guaranteed thing. Speaking of yeah. everything, then like, what about? True. I mean, true. people break vows all the time. Like just because Very you true. say, like we in this for you know something can happen where you don't think you can. Like you probably in the, initially thought, you know, we're in this together. I don't care when uh, whatever happens. We but that's together. not gonna stop care. me from having kids with my wife, though. That's my thing. Right? Like, yeah. I'm yeah. Be like, more subject I'm, to I'm have kids to with the... my wife than a girlfriend. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's where that's where marriage loses its value, though. When you can get married and just get divorced, like it's nothing. You're like, preaching, yeah, sir. It's not as valuable. Yeah, that's true. You're that's preaching. true. That's so right. speaking of speaking of that, there's a high profile couple right now are celebrities that's currently in the process of probably getting a divorce, which is Kanye and Kim. Kanye, Kanye and Kim. Kim. Do, are and we people, sure this isn't publicity? Are we all? No, because they been like he been. I mean, you know, it's been a, it, it it's been like a report that Kanye was like, "Why would he marry a hoe?" And then people were like, "Why would she marry a bipolar person?" Like it's been like. I'm surprised that she like, made him that way. I don't care what nobody say. If he drops an album, the Kardashians, you go crazy. Three weeks. Huh? <laughs> he may like, make him that way. He drops an album in the next three weeks. I swear. It's the Kardashians, period. Kim did not do that. Kim did not okay. make an okay. idea like He's that. He's always been a little. I'm sorry. You know. But do she brought it out of him? <laughs> she brought it out. of him. College dropout Kanye was not that. No, I feel okay. no. I feel like Kanye. <laughs> Kanye was dealing with a lot. I mean, especially like his he mom was. and all those things. And I mean, I don't know Kardashians. I don't. I mean, I get where people kind of get their dislike for them at, but I don't think Kim was this person that just made him oh, turn no, into a horrible no. person. And I feel like no. she probably, yeah, in a lot of instances, joking. was more, yeah. But I, I'm like, overall, like, I feel like in a lot of instances, she was probably, like, supporting him and trying to help him get through those those things and hurts and all those things he may be experiencing that kind of led to maybe his depression, his out, outbursts, whatever you want to call it. I feel like she probably did her wifely do this and try to be there for him and try to work it out and try to do those things. So I don't, I don't really like when people say, like, I shouldn't say not like. I don't think it's all the way true, you know, when people just like, oh, Kim made him that way. The Kardashians made him that way. I think people think had that in their minds. There is a trend, though. 
I feel, yeah. but no, I there feel is like, a trend with the men you know, that date Kardashian. There is but, a trend. Uh, those people <laughs> have things going on with themselves. Like it's not like they I just know, came into the situation. <laughs> You know, like they were perfect people and didn't have anything going right. on. A lot of those people that, a lot of those guys that have dated the Kardashians, they had even before meeting them, they had already had their own personal things going on. I think I it's, Lamar, just, it's, 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 just turn, it's just it turned up before. because you're coming into a family <laughs> that is super public. The family is super he was public. Sniffing before. I don't Everything's care out saying. in the public. <laughs> it was, and a this is a very powerful family. So it's like, it's a lot of things that come with that too. And sometimes I also feel like it's like, you got to be a certain person to come in and be able to like navigate all of that. Like all that they have going on and I'm gonna tell you where like, I really think. I really think that he cracked when his mama died. Manipulative. Oh yeah, yeah. That's that's a pretty pretty yeah, yeah. Because that's, his, that's when how his mama died. He turned into a whole different person. That I did too. Like that's when my mom passed. Like it's either gonna break you or it's gonna build you up. Because like that's how yeah. my business started. Like I just turned something tragic into something beautiful. You know, that's how Yummy Tummy started or whatever. But um, speaking speaking of this, going back like what what Jared was saying. They are getting a divorce, which Kanye being wanted a, a divorce like in 2020, uh, because it was like a rumor going around that she met up with uh somebody that he said that, but they were saying that it was another mental breakdown that he was having because he is um diagnosed with bipolar. But um, Jared, um, uh, she's a beautiful woman, even though she has a reputation, and what they have four kids, so do you really she's not going to be single like men are waiting for her right now they oh, probably did yeah. want- i mean that's kim kardashian is different right you exactly so like i think now if anything that's really going to push him over the edge that other men is going to be around his children you, you get what I'm? that's going to be gonna- rough that's going to be rough for kanye so- man i feel him. Yeah. Yeah. so if you if there was a single woman who had four kids but she was like maybe even just a little bit close to Kim Kardashian's tax bracket. You would go, you would date a Well, like I said, like it's not that I wouldn't date a chick who's got kids. It's just that it's a strike. It's like the more kids, the less likely I am to do it. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not saying I would never do it. I might do it if she's just that great. But she's got to be great, greater than the regular chicks who don't have kids. <laughs> you got to be How great. How would you be able to know that if you didn't give her a chance? I can give her a chance. I'm just saying she's she's at a oh, disadvantage from the jump. Okay, I see. I see. Well, if that's the case, then should I give Cowboy a chance? How would I know he's he got other? You're giving clients? him a chance. <laughs> yeah, get him out of here, man. <laughs> you have given him a chance. Get rid of Cowboy. No. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's, here's the thing. And what I was trying to say earlier was, and I don't feel like I got it out correctly. What I was trying to say earlier was, you just based off of you talked about him for ten minutes. That's a lot of information that you already know about him. You have already given him a chance. You get what I'm saying? Like you've already given him. Me. And I'm like, no. And he's kind of making me feel bad. Sometimes you just gotta let him know. He, he making me feel bad because he's making it seem like, oh, you think because you this and you got this and you got that. And I'm like, See, that's how it be. Look, Ashley, that's how it be when you coming and bringing a lot to the table and you trying to help somebody. When they get mad, they want to, oh, you think you, oh, you think you. <laughs> What's up? That's like, proof right there, though. That's proof right there that he's not where you need. That he's not on your level. If he feels like absolutely. he's got to bring you down to him, that's enough for me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Somebody absolutely. that tries to literally put you down when you know that your status is not the same. And okay, I said, now I really see where your head is at. And this is the thing: I didn't say we could be friends because I, I don't use that word loosely. I said there is potential for business opportunities here because. Uh, in 2019, I got approached about uh, going to rodeos, black rodeos, but then 2020 happened. Couldn't do no events. So when I met him, I said, oh, I was like, Cause reasons people are in your life for reasons of season. And so I said, well, you most definitely ain't going to be my man. I said, but we could do business together. So I didn't <laughs> want to talk to him no more. I didn't want to talk to him no more, but I said, we can keep in touch. Uh, uh, events usually start happening around like um uh, April, like April. And so I said, we can, you know, just touch bases like once a month or once every other month when April get here. <sighs> this mother sucker. What Ooh. really put me on the, bu- put him on the block list was when he asked me to pay his, can I get him a phone card? Oh, 
Oh, oh, I know that would have burned. I know would have burned me up. <laughs> yeah, he needs to get his get on his feet. I said, man. "Oh, you trying to play me?" <laughs> He don't need no girl right now at all. Yeah, he that's exactly what like, Jared was saying. Is saying like, Jared was saying that, like, if you you need to get yourself together, like, seriously, like, work on yourself. Like, why would you want to add? Because it's like, when you get a girl, like, that it's don't just sense. mean, you gotta, you gotta yeah, you got like, a girl. Like, that's, you know, that's that's work, you know, especially, like, with females, get, buying them things. But outside of that, like, you have to be able to be there for somebody. How can you fully be there for somebody if you can't really be there for yourself? You're a burden. You're a yes. burden on the chick. You don't want to be a burden to nobody. You're over here asking He's for phone bill. cards. He's a burden to be. The realest like, thing I've he ever heard. said that one of his good qualities was his worth ethic. If this is how no, he's listening, he's asking I mean, you for a card, how is his worth ethic good? Point being. Get a job, bro. Man. I just said it's right heard, here. One of the realest and, things and I ever heard. We got two guys up here that y'all can kind of confirm. I don't know what type of the caliber of women y'all date, but I think everybody tests people. Well, most people test people. And I think, I love you. I know he wanted it for real, but I think he was testing me, filling me out to see if I was one of those chicks that was going to be like, okay. Because women, by me talking to a lot of guys, they say that they're so happy to meet a woman like me who don't need me to sit, who don't need for me, no, for them to send me a cash app. And I was yeah. like, oh, so the cash app shit is real. Like, women really be asking Eric said, that. Eric said that earlier. You didn't see it in the chat? Eric said one of the biggest things for me is that you don't don't need me, but let me be everything for yeah. you. Yeah. He said, yeah, don't, that, that was a good quote. I meant to say something about that, too. Yeah. He was like, yeah. He said it earlier. Like, yeah. He want to be the, the type of woman who doesn't need him for everything, but she'll let him be everything that she needs. A that woman was, that asks for everything should get nothing, and a woman that asks for nothing should get everything. Right, yeah. You know what I'm saying? If if you showing me that you're here for me and not here for what I got, there ain't nothing I wouldn't do for you. Yeah, it'll come. And that's not just that's not just monetary, that's everything. There's nothing I wouldn't do for you. You know what I'm saying? But if 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 I'm if if we just started talking and we ain't been on our first date yet, and you said I don't know how my nothing. light bill gonna get paid. Um, <laughs> nothing. We ain't done that. We ain't even Facetime yet. No, no, crazy. we did Facetime. You know what I'm saying? That has happened to me before. That That's a light bill. What did, you, what did you say? What did you say back? I said I'm sure God will work something out. That's <laughs> literally what I said. I said I'm sure the Lord will work something out. I will be praying that He gonna work crazy. something out. That's yeah, unfortunate. I'm just like, bro, <laughs> that is unfortunate. Damn, man. I don't know what, what you're you going to do though? about that. Like, you know, <laughs> what, you, I, what you doing, though? I, you know, you got some candles or something. This what he told me. I said, I said, excuse you? He said, yeah. He said, because he got an accent. He, he's not like Geechee Geechee, but he has that accent, you know, but it's not real thick, thick, you know? Yeah. So he was just like, I'm just saying. I talk to you all the time, babe. I talk, I'm like, first off, you know my name is Ashley. Like, I'm not your babe. Like, I don't like titles. You it know, it's Bay. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> he got to he got to get it how I live. You Bay, you her, you wifey, you all of that. Come on, <laughs> oh, now. he told me that too. I'm starting to think what kids say. Like, he was testing my self esteem, baby. I'm up there. Like, I ain't one of them them big girls that 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 doing and everything. I, no, I got. I Ashley think don't care about nobody or nothing. Yeah, I think yeah, very right. highly of myself. <laughs> and so it pissed me off when he asked me for the phone card. And he was like, I said, boy, I don't know you. And he was like, but I talk to you all the time. He said, so you're going to let my phone get cut off? How I'm going to call you, baby. That's How crazy. I'm going to call you. I was like, oh, my God. And here's oh, my thing. Like, what Daniel says- was talking about is when people be dry begging. They don't come I- out and ask you, can you pay my light bill? <laughs> dry <bro>? begging. <laughs> <laughs> They be like, yeah, I don't know how I'm gonna pay for my light bill. My phone about to get cut off. Mm-hmm. Hoping that you say, "Oh, I give you the fifty dollars." Well, how much the phone bill is? How much the light bill is? Nah, nah I asked how much it is too, and I still ain't giving nothing. <laughs> oh, word, it's three hundred dollars. That's crazy. That's that's rough. That's rough, bro. I don't Damn, know how you. That was a lot of money. Did you try to make an arrangement? <laughs> Did you try to talk to them and tell them when you can pay? <laughs> oh, listen, I just had a guy. That um that was supposed to be. Let me say something. Guys will lie to try to get some uh or whatever. Some coon cat. They will lie. Oh, I'm gonna um. I I didn't take the Valentine's Day gift, you guys. I don't know if y'all been tuning in with that, but I didn't take this Valentine's Day gift because 
if I would have took the gift, then I felt like low key I would have been obligated to give something that he wanted, and I didn't want to do that because I I'm not I don't like him like that, you know. So I didn't take the gift. However, he was supposed to do something else for me. He was supposed to be paying for like five hundred dollars a month for my food trailer. He promised me this. I didn't ask him for this, y'all. He asked. He said I would do this. So I said, "Are you sure?" You know. So he was like, yeah, I got you. So I was like, I ain't gonna lie. I was contemplating. I said, this guy do this for me. He might can get a hand job, possibly, you know. Oh, all right. And so, I mean, because that's a, that's a big step, you know. That's better than nothing. And that's what I'm saying. <laughs> so, you know. But, <laughs> talking about better than nothing. <laughs> but the guy, he lied to me. He was like, oh, um, because he was supposed to give me like half of it on like round valentine's or some shit like that. i don't know what it was but anyway so basically um he lied he said his mama light bill was likes was about to get cut off and i said you lying motherfucker so i said you know what i've been paying a light bill before i even had my own apartment even when i was staying with my mom i was paying bills so i said send me the paper i said because before they get disconnected they send you a final notice like stamped in red i said send me the damn picture i ain't got a picture yet and then tomorrow will be a week but yeah, he's steady in my inbox, sending me them damn eggplant uh pictures and cat cat hey, cat cat. Gotta let her know what she missing. <laughs> Shut up. Anyway, but, uh, uh, what Marie said. What Marie said. Marie said, pinning them legs back. <laughs> pinning them legs back to the ceiling. Pressure. Post. No thanks. I'm good, bro. And I was like, I said, when you send me, when you send me that uh that picture of that uh final notice bill, watch your mama get, lights getting cut off. I said, then we can converse, but I am not talking to him no more because I can't deal with liars. Like, am I ready to deal with a black cowboy who want me to do this? Then I got him dealing with a guy who I just got all kind of, I got all kind of options. You got but all kind of mess. I want to go back to you, Eric. I do not pick men that are struggling. What happens is they be coming to me and I have to weed them out. You know, I have to weed them out. Like, I'm a real big, like, energy person. Like, I have to First, we talk over the phone. Then I might give you my real number, but possibly not. You still gonna get my fake number. Then we do the fake, the duo, you know. You know what you you need, Ashley? You need to have some strictly non-negotiables. Strict ones. I, I have those. That's like baseline. No, but baseline, baseline non-negotiables. Like one, teeth. you ain't got no car. That's it. That's it. No. Nope. She said yep. teeth. Come on. Teeth is a big Ashley, deal. Girl, big on teeth. Ashley will not talk to somebody because of just one little creak or two. She will say no. <laughs> well, if Courtney, it's Caroline, I, but, if it's Caroline, is too far back. Ashley is going to say no. Uh, 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 cause I, I will buy a man a toupee. I'm, I'm with that. If I can do my hair and put weed, <laughs> I wouldn't mind investing and get him one of those little things. Matter of fact, guys, we still got this. I screen just go to- ball. <laughs> just take it off. Just yeah, tell I, him to take it off. I mean, he let his hair grow out, but it was just real ball up in here. But he had hair around the side, so I was like, hmm, I wonder you if he get him a man. So he's George Jefferson. That's what it is. Hmm. I was going to do it. Yeah, that. I was going to do that. I don't mind doing stuff like that. But when, instead of him being honored and happy that a woman wants to see him with hair again, he took offense to it. He said, I ain't putting that shit on. I said, well, then you nappy head, spotted salamander, whatever. I don't care. Like, I tried to help him out. I tried to get him here again, but he didn't want to take the gift. Yeah. yeah, just go ahead and cut it off, bro. It's not cool to just hold on to every little piece of hair when it's falling out. <laughs> listen, listen, I'm telling you right now, I just noticed that my hairline started receding, and I literally texted my barber and was like, how much for a ball <laughs> this weekend? <laughs> I can't do it. I literally so looked at him. You ain't going to try the toupee part first? You ain't going to at least attempt to do that? No, I'm too lazy for that. All I need is to be shouting in church I, I, and my toupee go like this. Guys. I would hate that for guys because it's like you I'd rather you see the chrome dome. You either try to go bald or just try to thug it out and just wear it like it is. Go know? bald, man. Just take Wait, it you would hate that for and guys. grow a beard. Huh? You would hate that for guys because why? I'm just saying I would hate to be a guy and have to deal with that. Like, oh, oh young. I so gotta respect the hairline. Like, I either gotta like just wear it like it is or I gotta go bald. Like, that's just crazy. 
Oh, I just might not you. look right with a bald head. It's just all because you got a receding hairline. You got hair, but because the hairline is receding. Literally, literally, I Damn. literally, I literally. That's so. Getting, I've been getting the little Gumby thing, <laughs> getting my hairline all crisp, paying that extra money, and women, I'm just like, I'm tired of it now. Like, if you, if gonna, you ain't got no edges, you can cover that up plus. all the time. You can cover that up all the time. You ain't got to worry about that. But a receding hairline. Guys, I mean, everybody trying to get no pay. Like, you done I'm for if you got a receding hairline. My dad started going bald in his late 20s, and I was Eric, scared that shit was going to happen to me. I hate you for it. I was looking at your I'm hair. Still I'm still good. I'm still in the game. Day. How old are you, Ted? 30. 30? If my junk started falling back heavy, I'm it's letting it go, out. man. I'm not holding on to that junk. because you, you. The jokes and, and, and the clowning <laughs> is too much. That's yeah. why I don't want my man to go through that at work. <laughs> the gym. So I'm, I'm like, babe, I made you an appointment with my, my people. I'm going to let him put little shit on his head, the crown on his head, her shape it up. Ain't nobody going to know. It would bother me. It wouldn't. Have you seen Tori Lane's talking. hairline? Oh, that's that is hilarious. That junk is LeBron, horrible. all these dudes got these terrible hairlines, man. Gets no, cut that, it off. No, I can't do it. I can't do it. And I'm they tired of paying LeBron the extra LeBron. money. The LeBron. extra money for the for the I'm so tired you, of paying that. LeBron shit came off in a game. His shit came <laughs> off in a game. Off when he took the headband off. Oh my gosh. See, that's what I'm talking about. This is how I knew it was done for me. I got a fresh haircut. And he lined me up with the little black stuff. And I, oh. I took the picture, had like 300 lights. Look, I had like 300 lights. I took the picture, I was fly. I woke up the next morning. I called him and said, bro, I got to come back. It was <laughs> gone. That, that thing Beijing. was like that, son. That's all, that Beijing, <laughs> bro. That jump was like that. And I was like, dog, I can't do this anymore. Oh my like, God. I'm paying $40 I... for a haircut that's gone in two days. I can't do this no more. I'm cutting Damn. my hair off. I can't do it, bro. Can we record? Can we have that recorded? Like, can we extend, <laughs> like with a dramatic, like he walking in there and then he just and it just man. Wow. I thought I was God's gift to everything when I first got that haircut, man. That next day, I was I was so humble. Cause you know like, people will gas thing. you. People will gas you. Like even certain such situations, like you look back, you be like, dang, like y'all really gassed me, and it was not like. <laughs> Right, that wasn't what y'all thought it was. Steve Harvey yeah. had a toupee for 10 years before he decided nah, shit, to let that thing go off. Steve Harvey shit was so straight. Like, that shit was ridiculously straight. It looked like somebody literally he, measured he, that shit, for real. Right. Oh, that was a toupee? That was fake. It was a two, he had a toupee for 10 years. 10 years fake. before he high decided top, to just take it off. And the high this top high top fade, this high that top shit was fade, fade. Jump right here, all of that was fake. For real? All of that was fake. For 10 fake years, he admitted it. For ten years, why, that's why yeah, everybody no, was tripping. They was looking. They was like, sharp. "Why you go bald when your hair was so?" Yeah, perfect? that's what I'm saying. Like, bald? I mean, I thought it. I thought it was just because I'm like, he didn't. Nothing was wrong because everything was like clean cut and was mm, like that. Shit so, was too perfect. It, it was, was too perfect. absolutely perfect. And people was tripping. They was like, "Why you go bald when your hair was perfect?" And he yeah, was like, what "That wasn't mine. <laughs> that wasn't mine. That, I, I just, <laughs> it wasn't just, my hair." I just realized that I never knew that. Yeah, I don't know. Man had a how, they, how they say I was today years old when right when I found out, <laughs> when I found out right. that wow that's crazy yeah oh, I, well then if Steve Harvey can low key slide in like I don't know I just want to do what's best for like the guy that I would be dealing with because I don't I know especially being young and you have to go through that like nobody wants to, like women we don't want to lose our edges but shit happens you know but um. I'm only 27 well, that's more, years old. That's more old, on us, though. Depressing. That's more on us, like, with the hair, yeah, the hair right, style yeah. that we get. Mm -hmm. But with y'all, that's like, y'all, that is Hereditary. not in y'all control. Yeah, it's not in your control. My dad so was bald by 29. 29. My brother, my hey. brother is now, he just turned 29. Mm -hmm. He's not bald. Daniel, y'all have things, like, on the female that, like, is, like, if she got this going on, like, just physically, like, I don't want to talk to her. Like, anything physical that's just, like, automatic turn mm. on. I mean, it's a few things. <laughs> <laughs> Jared, say, I just need to. I need to see the ladder. No, no, for me, no. I need to see the ladder. I don't. I don't necessarily discriminate. But if come looking a certain way, I need to see you at your worst. And that's just what. Well, no, means. no, not even like, not even like, like, not even worse as like bummy dress and you know her hair like missing. Like, I'm just saying, is there anything like physically on a woman that would just like if it's off or something like hat like doesn't look right that you automatically like. The whole hairline. I have a really hard, oh, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Well, yeah, like, I have a really hard time or talking somebody to somebody with a who's super flat butt. Like they have no butt at all. Like no ass I, is not gonna work. 
You gotta have something for me to grab. No ass, just, no ass. Yeah, man. like nothing. Like she is gorgeous. Like, no, but she doesn't buddy. have my butt. A, my butt can't enough, be bigger no than ass. yours. My butt cannot be bigger than yours. It so if you had to choose between like <laughs> like breasts <laughs> and, and butt, like you would choose like the girl to have like she got to have some butt versus. I'm a booty man. Great. I'm a booty man. Are like a like an extra. It's like it's nice if yeah. you got them, but I don't yeah. really need that. But I'm a booty. No man. ass. I'm that's mandatory. Man. Why? Why is that mandatory though? Why is it mandatory? Because ass. Because everybody needs a pillow. Okay. You can't. No, you I'm doing... just saying because I know someone else who was like who basically says the same thing. So I'm just I don't understand it. You okay? He Doggy style again. is the best call position. Call again, because I didn't see it. I saw it at ten ten, but try calling in again. Truth is, doggy style <laughs> is the best position, and if you have no ass, it's not going to be enjoyable. That's it. That's the whole reason right there. Well, is that your reason, Daniel? For, but wait, what was your reason? I missed it. I was about. He said, "Doggy style is the best position. If you don't have no ass, it's not." Oh. I guess that's what well, I don't know when somebody bending that's over, not, it probably can look like they got one. Oh, but that's not mine. That's, that's not, not that's not my deal breaker. Bent over, isn't it the same thing though? Like I don't understand how. What you say? Nah, it's not the same. It's not the same. I've seen chicks with no ass, and it's just it, it's nothing moves. Nothing moves when you're doing what you're doing. Nothing is moving. It's not fun. And you want the jiggle <laughs> and the booty and all of that. that yeah, not. you want to shake it the, and move it around. I think the main the main <laughs> ailment on a woman's body that would that I would struggle with it would probably be the only one is it would be very difficult for me to talk to somebody who's cross-eyed or has a lazy eye because I don't know if you're looking at me I've eye. done that though like, I talk, I just don't yeah, I to and I'm not trying to be funny I'm not trying to be funny it's just like I knew a fine chick with cross I'm not gonna know I've done a la lazy eye may be a little too. different lazy eye may be a little different than cross-eyed because I've talked to somebody who had a lazy eye but not cross-eyed you said you have or you have you would yeah yeah a guy yeah I mean, and it, it wasn't like a huge like notice thing. It was just like you know, like if you look at him long enough, you're like, oh, one of his. No, eyes. I mean, like it's no, I'm in, talking about this. The, the looking nose that way. Now. Oh gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I just I don't know because I don't know if you're looking at me. Like I'm not gonna know if you're talking to me, and I don't want to hurt. Like I don't want to get on your nerves. I don't want you to fuss at me. Like you're not listening, and I'm like, I don't know if you're talking to me. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> I want to be. I ain't gonna lie. I had a chick that was cross eyed. That shit was kind of cute because she was fine. And she was fine though with the cross eye. I ain't gonna lie. I saw glasses? one. She wore glasses. She had like an injury when she was a kid and something mm -hmm. happened. Um, but she still was fine with the cross eye. I got to get it to her. Yeah. <laughs> but it was just like really this. I think glasses uh, help with when you're cross eyed. Like it makes you like, oh, you're kind of smart. And a little bit, you know. It kind of <laughs> helps a little bit. Like it adds tax. <laughs> it's like curtains in a house. Like it adds like, you know. What about y'all ladies eye? though? What, what is there something on, on a man's body that you don't think? Besides my the thing is, I don't my my do thing is like I don't think it's like a deal breaker for me, but one thing that I I don't like just because. So it's like for me when I was I was never big, but when I was bigger, like you can tell that I'm not me. Like you could tell like when I was heavier. Like I don't want a guy who <laughs> who has like a funny some kind of funny walk or oh, not damn. me. Only thing that's what that about I would bowling? be attracted with, yeah, bow leg is okay, but not not like if you like super bow leg, I don't like that either because it looks weird. Like, like if you got <laughs> if you got like just that little bow leg, if you got a little bow leg, now that's that's super attractive, but not if you like all the way out like this. Like I don't like that, but it's just like if you not got one of them one of them uh. nasty walks or like one of them, I don't know, just just funny walks or something wrong with the legs or something. I don't that's like that. Now it's not a it's not a complete deal breaker. It's just one of those things like not need chicks is cool though. I don't have no problem with that. Yeah, I can't. Yeah. I don't know. I can't. Not, that's another, that's that that noticeable. I don't think I can do knock knee. I don't really? think I can do knock knee. Mine's is not that noticeable though. So I think that's why I can get it get away with it. People might not know, but like when you walk watch me walk, like you'll be able to tell like a little bit. Like oh, here's cold. my thing. I, but when I think of knock knee, I think of like. The the let the greater than and less than sign pointing towards each other like yeah I don't yeah. I don't think but it's like really really bad like oh really okay I got bad. you yeah yeah you know what I'm saying like and no, that's, I like that's, it. It, if it's a little <laughs> bit like that I'm like not it, tripping Jared. but if you if your yeah. knees is literally not you 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 making up stuff Jerry you do not like that <laughs> not <'cause it's> like, <laughs> your self esteem no nah, because what I I like I like chicks like okay I'm not saying 
that that because you're not needed means you like kind of goofy or nothing. But I like kind of goofy chicks. You know what I'm saying? Um, That's what I like. So I like a little knock knee, you know, a little cross eye. You know what I'm saying? I like that. <laughs> that shit cool. Um, are you single? Thank that, Jared. I can't yeah. That. You're single, Jared? Yeah. All right. So if you got any type of issue. <laughs> I mean, if you got knock knee, cross eye, as long as you If you not that booty, need and you goofy with a little cross eye. Go ahead and call. Go ahead and call in <laughs> right no now. Kids. We can play no matchmaker kids. right now. Right. Let's get it popping. Listen, when I get, let's my get money, it popping. I told you when I get my money up, I am gonna do that thing like where you be like, oh, you got a crush on somebody? Like your social media crush, and you gotta call them like on live and be like, hey, um, that would be dope. I would love to do that. You gotta do what? Do we should do that. I wanna do we it. We should do that. Wait, do what? I'm down. Like Basically, social, like somebody come on press. a guest. Social media. You want to know what my biggest turn off? Oh my god! What? what? Dirty fingernails. I don't even have fingernails. I Oh, long fingernails! I'm glad you mentioned that because long fingernails, like your your nails need to be down to the meat. Like you don't need to have no fingernails. Oh I yeah, I don't got none. I bite mine. I don't. Yeah, down. just like just like that, Jared. Just like that. I don't mind. Mine, little don't, be, but mine don't, don't be down to the meat. They have like long, long fingernails. Like, I don't want to coat pinky. Like, I don't need that in my life. But <laughs> dirty fingernails yeah, no. bothers me. I don't like that. Mm. Whitney, that food looks good. I'm sorry. Huh? I just ate and I'm looking at you. What you eating, Whitney? Oh you? my gosh. If y'all ever in Columbia, and I know y'all, you know, people have their own thing, but if you ever want some bomb vegan soul food, a piece of soul is where you need to heard go. About I heard about them. I've heard I've heard yeah. about a piece of soul. It's a piece of yeah. soul. So right now I'm eating this sweet and sour chicken with Is brown it cauliflower. Rice. No, it's, it's um I don't know exactly what it is, but I think it's like a um what's the thing? What's the base? Something is base. It tofu? Thing. No, it's not tofu. Oh. It's um yeah, I can't think of of what it is, but it's not it's not any of those. Like the texture of it is more meaty. Okay. It's that um, it's that thing. I know. I think I know what it is. It's say, uh, oh, Satan, it? Satan, Sat, Satan, or whatever it is called. It's That's like what the, it is. you can peel it, kind of right. Not jackfruit. Oh, okay, never mind. Yeah, not jackfruit. Are you are you vegan or is it just a restaurant you ate at? No, so I um I don't eat meat, so but I still eat so I'm not so <laughs> I still eat seafood. So I'll still okay. eat like fish and crab legs and stuff you like that. You're pescatarian then. You're basically yeah. pescatarian. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So like, I don't have like a. Oh, anyway, so. No, no, I'm taking place to me. Whitney. Whitney. I'm a Leo. You're a Leo. I'm pescatarian. You're pescatarian. For real? <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm pescatarian. <laughs> I knew she was going to do that. She got Whitney. Whitney. <laughs> she was she waiting so for you to stop and be too. like, where are they? Are they? We all need to be. Me and Whitney should have been friends. I don't understand this. Well, you uh, see how things come together. Things, you know. Yeah, man. I had. I feel so much better like now that I don't eat meat. Like, I don't know. I've been on the up and up. I've been on the up and up since I I let it go. Not even. I mean, not even knocking people because I know you can. Some people, you know, you can eat meat and still live like a a healthy lifestyle depending on what you're eating especially i mean not if you're consuming a whole bunch of pork and all that other stuff now chicken turkey i can kind of see but like literally ever since i stopped eating meat like my whole body feels different like it's different i don't different. i don't feel heavy i don't feel i don't feel like now that i eat to just because just to eat like when i eat now it's because i'm hungry and i'm gonna just eat enough so i'm not hungry again like i'm not eating for satisfaction and just like oh I want cookies and I want this and I want that like I'm not like doing all of that it's just like I'm just need enough you don't have to, those cravings yeah I just need enough for the day every now and then I might want something like super greasy or sweet or something like that and chicken wings that's the only thing that's like been hard like to this day like chicken wings has really been like the thing that I miss the most so, that's so crazy. That's the you main know, reason. I went pescatarian. I used to love bacon. I used to put bacon on everything. When I went pescatarian, the first thing I missed was chicken. And I was never the type of person to be like, I want some chicken. You know what I mean? I was never that person. Chicken that's, wings, like that's the thing. So like that's I still the main need to find, reason why I can't do it. Chicken wings. I, like a, I just love I, it. I don't really like when people do substitutes that are like on a vegan lifestyle. Like, because I feel like if you get too stuck on trying to do substitutes, like you're gonna get caught up in trying to make 
everything exactly. looks like chicken. Everything tastes like yeah. this. Like you just know right. you, you're gonna be vegan. Like just live a vegan lifestyle. Eat your whole grains. Eat your fruits. Eat your vegetables. Eat your raw whatever. Like don't try to overdo it. Like every now and then it's fine because like, I ain't even gonna lie. This is a piece of soul place. Like I if I don't cook anything or I don't get anything from anywhere else, like I'm usually nine times nine times out of ten I'm there. So. That's like my yeah, guilty. That's why I actually I was like, is it um cauliflower? Because I just tried uh well a couple times I tried buffalo buffalo wings and um, oh yeah parmesan garlic wings and sweet and spicy wings, but it was cauliflower, you know. Mm. And I was I like, do it. It, lo- it looked like yeah, a wing. I, it remember, like a I remember Daniel had said something on uh, <laughs> Facebook. He was like, I would be super bad <laughs> if I bite into uh, a Listen, wing and it's cauliflower. <laughs> there was a picture. There was a picture that I shared. And when I tell you the cauliflower was shaped like chicken, it was like a, a it was perfectly breaded, mm-hmm. perfectly breaded. And I said, if I come over to your house and I bite into a piece of fried chicken and it's cauliflower, I'm shooting you I in your own house. Yeah, that's what you said. That's what you said. Yeah, that I'm shooting you. That is, that is so, like a, so happy I with just t- can't. It's actually good, but of course it's not chicken, but it's actually good. Yeah, it's, it's good. good. I right. personally but don't like is, cauliflower. If you period. go into yeah, it thinking, that's go. my thing with people good. trying to do substitute. If you go into it thinking like, oh, this vegan substitute is going to taste just like chicken, like you already going to be disappointed. Like, yeah. don't even have that yeah, in your mind. Yeah. People say that like, oh, it's all in the flavor and all that. T- no, chicken is chicken. Cauliflower is cauliflower. You can make it resemble the taste a little bit of the chicken but it's not gonna be chicken yeah, you, it's just, you need just, to it's just the sauce and the shape That's i just it. love it too much like cauliflower at all huh i don't i do not like i i have tried it in almost every way that i can taste it i've been to different restaurants and it's I, just, like I don't sprouts. know i don't i hate brussels huh? sprouts me too. I but see, I love Brussels sprouts. sprouts. I hate them. People be like, "Won't you stop? Tell you? Won't sprouts. you grill them? Get the fuck out my face!" Oh, throw them shit in the that. trash. Yeah, I just like <laughs> to eat cabbage. Just give me cabbage. I don't like Brussels. But cabbage sprouts. is good. Yeah, I, Brussels sprouts are too bitter. I don't like. I, don't like, I can't. Kale is, better. Kale, kale is collards to me. Like I, I love collards. like fried kale and rice. I, I, I can't. I can't do collards. Collards are like, gross. It's just certain people that that cook. That's like my cousin Miranda. I want some collards. Or whatever. Use smoked turkey, you know. But I never had good collars in my life, and they always tell me you'll try somebody else's collars. They never good. <laughs> you say they never good. Yeah, like it's never like good. my cousin, and of course my aunt. You gotta try like this my... person's collars. <laughs> yeah, trash. First of all, I don't eat everybody food. No way. Right, right. I, just oh, don't, I, don't, do I don't eat public potato eat. salad. Like, I because I'm a I'm a a craft nah. miracle whip girl. Like I don't fuck with Hellman's or do. Oh yeah, right? yeah. I, so I know people. I know that is more a little more expensive. So I don't do public potato salad. You know. Let me tell y'all something. For the six people that's in here, y'all need to try. Ask one you, person, uh, the one person, because if all of us logged in, then five of the people is. <laughs> oh well, we no, don't get out to like. I was talking about for the I'm, for the six of us watching. Y'all need to oh. try Ashley's uh Alfredo, bro. Like for the people that if you ain't which one did you have. Alfredo, I had the what was it? Um, shrimp um, and uh and sausage. Oh yeah, I, I didn't God, it was supposed to be a jambalaya. Bite. Bite. It was supposed to be a jambalaya. Let me tell y'all some. The fat. And I had the out. shrimp. I, I had the shrimp and crab. The shrimp and crab. I think that's what I had. The seafood. They yeah, know what I had, so Ashley. Good. Yeah. Yeah. And then she made some quesadillas. Oh, I made those. Can, can I put in an order? <laughs> I'm cooking right now. I, I think I'm gonna cook. Oh, I'm not cooking. I know you're not cooking right now, but can you cook for me? <laughs> I will pay extra. No, we, we can bar. We can barter services. I cook for you. You know, come hook up my stuff. You know, you just cook what you want. That's a bit. That's a bit. Because I, I, I want to like I'm a... stream from different. You know. Oh, that's a that's good trade off though. Then you go with that, and he wants some food, and you can come. cook the best. Though. You know what I'm saying? Let me know what you want. You know what I'm saying? I, you know. I want that same thing. I can put peppers I and onions want... in it. Can I? Can I make it like a jambalaya Dude, for real? Make it like a jambalaya. I I, I don't have Perfect. a problem with peppers and onions. I, it, that's fine. Make it how you want it. Make it how you want it. I didn't know that that's what you. I thought she was making like the jambalaya with the rice. So that's the reason why I said just give me the sausage inside of the uh what what you call it. Um, but yeah, definitely. You just let me know. I'll come. I, Cause I was gonna do that anyway for you. And then so I now need I'm to, getting um, something out of it. I need to. T- I need. <laughs> 
Well, I was just gonna let you just do it for free, you know. I was gonna offer <laughs> something. Um, it probably be I need to uh test. I'm actually supposed to be. I was considering going to uh Columbia. When have you did uh went to Soda City before? Yeah. Okay. Soda City thinking, Market. Yeah. 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 I was. You coming up here for that? I was thinking about. Well, really, I want to come up there and buy me some food for some restaurants, but uh, um, but I also need to um, I want to start selling red velvet funnel cake. And so it's a store oh. up there mm. that got some stuff that I need to make it like a red velvet. But I'm gonna do a homemade version. But I don't like, I don't like making homemade funnel cakes no more because when it's hot, the it it cooks before I even put it in the oil, you know. Oh. But I, I can buy this batter where I can just add water to it and it's perfect. But when I try to do it from scratch, like adding the eggs and the the baking so baking powder and, and salt. It cooks before, um, but I want to try something. Um, well, if you come up here to the Soda City Market, let me know. All right. Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> let me know when you start making them. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, well, I think I'm doing Wait, something wrong with your thing, your volume, Ashley, or something. You seem like you, I can't, we can't hardly hear you. Hello? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, St. Patrick's Day is coming up, so I think I'm going to do something in Florence. Um, you know, they got the Eats on the Creek. What, yeah. What? Yeah, I think I'm gonna go out there um around St. Patrick's Day, I think. Jay, hey. what you doing in Florence? Hey Bay. You said what am I doing? Yeah, like what do you like? No, like what do you do like for hey, girl? I ain't gonna lie, I'm pretty boring. I just pretty much go to work and go home. <laughs> I ain't gonna that's lie. That's being an adult <laughs> like now. Like, yeah, literally, yeah, you know, I'm wake just taking up, go to work. And I come home and I play my game. Facts. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like when I get off here, I'm about to go play some Call of Duty before I go to sleep. You know what I mean? <laughs> what you want? Warzone? Yeah. Yeah, I'll be catching bodies up there. Do I have roommates? Do y'all have roommates? I live by myself. I walk I around do. my house in my drawers. Yeah, you have roommates? Yeah. Roommates or a roommate? Just one. Just one. Just one. Oh, okay. Okay. It's, it's someone you know is like a stranger. Oh, it's somebody I know. For okay. sure. Hell no, nah, I ain't living with no stranger. Because <laughs> I did Airbnb when I was in Columbia, but it was like, I, I guess it was like a stranger, I guess you could say. But um, yeah. yeah That's I'm scary. Gonna... I can't sleep there if, if a stranger's in there. I don't know what they're going to do. It was one of those times where I was like, I, I followed this uh, group on um, Facebook called Budgetistas, and it was just like all different types of ways that we like you can make extra money. Mm -hmm. And so I contemplated that because like I'm an introvert, like I don't really like dealing with people, you know. Not that I don't like people, but I just like peace and energy, you know. And she um, don't like high people don't let her play. Anyway, <laughs> and so um, and it worked. Like it was very lucrative, you know. The only thing was um, I wish I had like two bathrooms, you know. But I just had like one big bathroom, mm. and so like it was a door. I had two doors to my bathroom. Like one door you can just walk from the hallway and go into it, and then the second door was like, you go through that door, go through my walk-in closet, then you can go through my, um, to my room. So I did put like, um, locks on like my doors and stuff. And then in the outline on Airbnb, I was like, this, this is like putting a red X, like you can't come in here. So the common areas that we shared was like the kitchen and the living room. And of course the back. Yeah. But it was, it was money. I love people want to like get, get an apartment in Columbia and just do Airbnb up there. But yeah. You know. He had a friend who was doing that. He said he was making decent money doing that. Yeah. I would, yeah, I don't know if I would want to do that. Somebody suggested, because me and my sister live together now, but um, she may be moving out. And then somebody was like, oh, well, you should you uh, rent out the other um the other room as Airbnb. And I'm like, no, nah, I'm not that. I'm I like my space and I don't like people in my space. I don't want you around mm -hmm. if I don't know you. So I don't think I could ever. I mean, it may be good money, but I don't think I could do the Airbnb. Yeah, thing. you you can pick and choose. Um, how would you do that though? Like, how would you do that? Somebody like 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 let's say they want to stay up here for a weekend. Like, how would they come in and out? Like, you gotta give them a key. You give them a key. <laughs> you give them a key or you can do a lockbox thing you can do you can like pay the lockbox thing yeah, yeah. put in like the code or whatever i would suggest a code mm -hmm. do a code i, mean, I would suggest like, code. i mean like getting in the house that's what, that's what you're you talking about you give them a, key, you, you you can, a, a, a you can code, get the like, lock thing and, and punch in yeah, the code you put a little thing on the, the handle or something and they put in the code like the oh. code, the code mm -hmm. usually is their last four digits or their phone number oh but you can buy this this thing to put on there it's literally like the doorknob lock and like you just make, you make the room just like a hotel. Like yeah. I had a mini fridge in mm -hmm. there. Um, 
you know, if they didn't want, I didn't really prefer them to use my big fridge, but that I gave them a mini fridge and then I had an iron board in there. And then that room that had the door, it had, you could walk off onto the balcony. I had like little chairs and stuff on the balcony for them. And you were in there like you were just in there living while they was in there too? Yeah, I mean, I would go out and go places, but my room door, I mean, like, in there, like, right now, I'm, I'm in my living room, just in my element. Just well, no, 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 I would get them somebody. space. I would get them, no, 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 I'd just either be in my room, locked up in my room with my door locked, or I would be out somewhere. Oh, okay. Yeah, and it's, honestly, you know what's really good? Because, like, if I, if, remember the guy, Daniel, um, that I was talking about, Columbia dude, the, the ED guy, he <laughs> right him, oh, like, damn. If, Oh, oh yeah, that yeah, was- Jerry. That was a thing. Yeah, that was a whole thing, bro. That was a whole thing. We ain't yeah. gonna talk about it. When sure I get that, like performance that. anxiety. Love to hear, Jerry. <laughs> oh no, no, uh, no. He smoked a lot of weed, so I don't think the anxiety was the problem. <laughs> no, he was saying he was saying performance anxiety. Like some I mean, people can't get, perform. Get, under sometimes you get you know, nervous. It's like, oh man, it's about to happen. Now no, it don't, like, it, it don't work like, at all. It don't work. If you at ain't all. never had, that, if you ain't never did it with that person, Jared, Jared, this dude, this dude literally has taken pills. Oh, that's different. And, yeah, yeah, he got eating. <laughs> yeah. He should be an advocate. But anyway, damn. um, damn, what was I about to say? That's oh, so yeah, yeah. cold. Okay, that is, so, I just no, can't get over that. Not cold. <laughs> but I was gonna say, if me and him would have like been something or you know whatever, then well, actually, I suggested that he do that with his room because he has a he has a two bedroom in um Columbia, and um, but anyway, I was gonna rent out my house. Like I was gonna be like, put it up here. But when it's time for a guest to come, I would just go up there with him, stay with him for whatever days that uh, you know, that they would, you know, book book the uh place. Yeah. So, oh, that wouldn't be too bad. That'd be kind of yeah, cool. but we we didn't do so many things though. Yeah. So. I don't really feel shut up, Whitney. Oh, shut up, Chris. I see you smiling. <laughs> <laughs> I see her smiling like, well. Hey, hey, tell the story about the dude with the erectile dysfunction. Oh, God. oh you, we might need to click off. We might need to click off this live for that. Yeah. I want to hear Jared's uh, opinion about that. I think that's well. Be- click off this live. Click off this live. What happened? <laughs> Lord. Yeah, take it off live. I mean, it's about to be eleven, so he we ain't gotta, we ain't gotta go. I'm deep. keeping it up here. He blocked me. He blocked you. you? He blocked oh, that's me. a new development. Oh, what wow. happened? Like, how? What happened? Like, you no. Know? Well, I thought he was like the perfect guy. If he had everything, like. You know, the manifesting the love, like he had that stuff on those lists. Like he had a job. Right. He was taller than me. He had a beard. Hey. He had hair. Um, he had a kid and he was responsible. Uh his child support was automatically deducted. That's a great guy. He was, <laughs> uh, that's why I knew it was so he had a car. It was up to date. It actually worked. It wasn't in the shop. He had two jobs. Um I was just like, what the fuck? I was like, I she was, was like, something be... got to be wrong with something. I knew wrong. something was wrong. I, I knew something was that wrong. Sucks. Like, you know, but when I first went there, um, he was very gentleman. Like, he was just like, would you like something to drink? And I don't trust drinks. I always bring my own bottled water because I don't want nobody to try to date rape me or anything, you know? Right. And so he was right. just like, <laughs> he was very respectful. Like, because I don't smoke at all. So he, he you know, rolled his list. He, and he went over to the other side of the room. And, you know, I started... <laughs> <laughs> a true gentleman because it doesn't right. even take much for me like it, it, i just i just don't like the smoke and so um he put it out you know it was just it was just damn it i'm doing it again i want to call him again daniel like, but then oh the, the more we get into this story it's gonna happen again where i'm like you know what fuck that nigga you know okay <laughs> so he had all these great qualities right and then he wanted me to meet his mom, which I told myself in 2020, I was like, I'm not meeting no mom because I had a traumatic experience Wait, one of the guys I was dealing with, I love his mom. She passed. I know you can't help that. But I just don't want to get close to moms like that ever again until it's like my husband, you know, because I love hard. Mm-hmm. If if I defrost my heart to do it. But anyway, um, so he wanted me to meet his mom. I was like, bro, you moving too fast. I was like, you know, because I know what qualities, you know, I know I'm a good woman, you know, and so um, we was just really vibing, getting to know each other, but then I started seeing things like, I don't know, 2020, everybody was dying, and so I was like, you know, I'm about to start doing things that I never really done before, you know, just in case I catch COVID and I'm out of here. You know, I need stories, you know, and so because um, I don't want to get to heaven and be like, damn, I should have fuck, you know, so 
I took the initiative. So I was like, we was watching some movie with Lunell. And so she was saying something about masturbating. And so I said, when the last time you masturbated? And he was like, <laughs> like, cause I caught him off guard, you know? And so he was like, um, I mean, uh, like on some beavis and butthead type shit. You know, I'm like, boy, just say it. And so, cause he's older than me, he's like 39 or whatever. And so, um, that's when he told me about um the diabetes and the metformin and the high blood pressure and the dick not working. I said, Eesh. and I, I said, at all? He's like, I mean. I said, when did I say he had sex? He was like, he made it seem like when we was, because I'm very like into conversation when I, I talk to somebody. Like people, people, when guys meet me, they say like, I'm, I interviewed him, which low key I do, you know, because I just need to know if we're going to make it to the next day because I don't want to waste your time and I don't want you wasting my time. So it, it's best if you go ahead and answer these basic questions, you know, like transportation, source of income, how many kids, you know, so I can determine if I want to, because it's my life, you know? So anyway, so, um, I said at all, and he was like, I mean, I take pills, I can take, he lied to me, fuck it, he lied, he made it seem like if he uh, takes some pills over the gas station, crap, <laughs> it'll work, we've tried like several pills, and then he wanted to please me, I let him, you know, but then it started becoming uncomfortable, because I, he made me feel like a lesbian, you know, oh, shit. Right. <laughs> so, and then the crazy part about it is, um, I was like, you know, trying new thing. I said, would you consider using like a dildo? And he didn't even want to use a dildo knowing that his penis doesn't work. So I'm like, this really, cause I was in my head, no. I, was trying to, I was trying to make it work. I was like, he's a great guy. Like he has a lot of things on the list, you know? And, but his penis doesn't work. And so I was like, well, I need that cause sex is a love language, you know? And so I said, well, would you consider either me having a lover? Like he's just for sex. But, or would you consider using a dildo, like, you know, on me? He said no to both. And so I'm like, well, how can we, what can we do? Like, I'm going to cheat. I'm wow. going to cheat. Like, I'm not going to be, like, that's not tough, fair. Right, Derek, that's tough. That's tough. Right. And, it, and it's still sad, but he went to the doctor. Basically, it's reversible. It is reversible. Like, the only thing it is, he just need to it get his blood right. Yeah, get his blood pressure down <laughs> because he did. He did go to. No, uh, I say I say that because I'm a diabetic too. Like I know that's one of the things. No, it's just the way that you diabetes. said it. You was like, "Give <laughs> me sugar, right?" Like, oh, okay. <laughs> hey, he, hey, he got it. My thing is this, like, and the reason, the reason why after Ashley told me all, because me, me and Ashley, we talked about this for like three hours after my first show. And I told at first I was like, you ain't you, you know what I'm saying? That could have been the man. Like that could have no, been him. He was. He you know what that's what made me be like, should I call him? And what, then what, she what? started saying what she was saying, and I was like, dang. Like some he, she was trying to be here for him. She tried everything she possibly Actually, could. Actually, always doing man. her part. She always do her yeah. part. That's a and big they just flaw. fail to measure up to that. Like she always like, okay, I'm gonna give you a chance, and then she give you a chance, yeah. you don't show what you can do with it. And the thing that lie. the thing that frustrated me about him was like the doctor told you it was reversible, but she didn't do nothing for it. And I my thing is that. like if I if that's I was like he catfished me. by getting your sugar right, right, getting your he, blood pressure right. He had to lose he some weight. You gotta eat ago. better. And then that thing's that thing would naturally fix itself. You what know what I'm saying? So it's just Daniel? like I'm not Daniel. Jared, what are you about to say? No, I'm I'm like, okay, so he can fix it just by getting in shape, basically. Eating not, right, not getting in shape, but yeah, just taking care of his health, focusing like, on his health. Yeah, his health, fixing not his health. fitness. His, he had uncontrolled diabetes. The sugar was uncontrolled. His blood pressure was uncontrolled. Damn. That's reversible things. So the thing is, like, if I, if uh, uh, for me, and what this is what I told Ashley, like, for me, if I was in that situation, and I'm falling in love <laughs> with this one, she left out the fact. She left out the fact that he was going to propose. So he oh. had, he had to feel. He had to feel a certain type of way about Files it. real quick. He Guess who just love. messaged me? Guess who just messaged me, you guys? The guy? The was guy it? about the $500. He oh, gonna my say, God. He's going to say, do you still need the 500 He's just trying to bait me because he know he ain't got it. He think <laughs> he I'm going to on it. He, he been on well, the what, what I was saying, Jared, what I was saying was just basically like, I'm going to do those things, try to do those things to fix Like, if, I, if, I, if, this, if there's something wrong with me, that's reversible. 
and that affects somebody else. Why not take that step I mean, and being like, let like, me get my stuff together? He needs to fix that immediately. Because I ain't going to lie, somebody right. telling me to use a dildo on them, would that would be it for me. I would be devastated. That would destroy my confidence. I would be like, oh. oh. A dildo? You know do you That's understand what, type of, what what levels of thinking and compromise that I had to take to say, how can I make this work? Because I don't want to just walk away from a situation like what you said about you having a child with a woman. Like you're not just going to walk away from a situation. And I know that this guy was like amazing. Like I haven't met Damn. nobody, you know, and I was just like, what can I do? What can I do? Like, it's my fault. I'm like, what can I That's do? That's tough I do? though. I, I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, he got to fix that because ain't... I don't know too many chicks who are gonna want to do who can't have sex and I, with. Him. And we had a heart to heart about that. I told him, I said, I, I threw him a couple jokes. I said, either you're gonna have to be gay, or you're gonna have to find a woman with vaginal. Gay drive. people have sex too. Hey, gay people have sex too. I'm about to say, like, That's unless he. But if he's a bottom, but if he's a bottom, Damn. it doesn't matter. That's you worse. understand what I'm saying? It's he all bad for up. him, man. He's in a bad situation. Did you see <laughs> vaginal dryness? Yeah, because he can't get hard and she can't get wet. Voila, they together. Wow. That's, that's terrible. That's a horrible situation. <laughs> that is a horror. That's a fire. Yep. That's no. terrible. That's a waste of time. But at least they love each other. So, that was though, my so he so he doesn't enjoy sex. I'm thinking if I if I like having sex, I'm gonna get I'm gonna do what I need like, to do. Do what you, you know need what to do to make sure you can still have it. Yes. Like he's gonna go to the rest of his life without having sex. What kind of life? Like is if that? somebody told you, like you mentioned, if somebody said it's reversible, like you can eventually never have this problem if you just Get your health together. Put down the sweet. Stop doing this. Stop doing that. Like I would be yeah. like, bro, I'm finna do. Stop doing all of that. I'm finna that's, go hard. And that's my point. That's my point. There's somebody that I love, and and there's something. This this is this is an important thing. I'm gonna take the necessary steps to now. If it's just totally out of my control, then that's that's another story. But we're here. Like it, the doctor told you, yeah, you, you know what I'm saying. You can perform again if you just. Get yourself together. So he's completely kind of incapable. Like he can't at all. Not even a little bit for a little while. Even when it's just I tried, nothing. when I tried to sat, uh, sexually satisfy him uh, via the hand, you know, it done nothing. You know, and I I went above and beyond. You know, my my womanly duties. You know, <laughs> and still I nothing. Fl I flickered no pulse. it. I flickered <laughs> it. I thumped it. You know, I juggled oh. it. <laughs> It was nothing. Jesus. That's bad. It was nothing. Yeah. And it and it disappointed me so bad because I was just like, I felt sorry for him. Like I, I really did because I was like, he's a good guy and ain't no woman gonna put up with this. Like that's a deal breaker, man. Chicks wanna have I sex. Don't understand is why he didn't even want to just do what he needed to do. His diet That's was my was point. Exactly. Well, well, hold on. I'm gonna say this. I'm not I'm gonna, I'm not gonna shit on it. I'm gonna say this. I invested in him, which I always fucking do. I invested in him, so we went to the whole food store, and so I, you know, um, got him food and stuff or whatever. Uh, but my my deal breaker oh, thing was stuff invested going to Whole Foods. I know, right? Because I, <laughs> because I was trying, you know, I was trying. <laughs> and so, um, uh, what what made us like me me stop was uh because. Oh, he cat well, number one, he catfished me. He he he, he should have been told me that, which me and Daniel and I think Whitney or whoever, we I said you should have let a person know, like because we met on like a little chat line type crap. Thing, you don't right? want to lead with that though. That's gonna that's gonna I get just you. Said you let a person Jared. know. Thank you, Jared. Thank okay, you. But Jared, okay, but Jared, how about you this start thing? off first message like, oh, by the way, yo, I can't get I can't have sex. No, you don't Third say message. I can't have sex. We, yeah, because we, talk, we, we talked about that. We talked about that. Yeah. Yeah, but I, you. This is what I say, Jerry. I say, don't say I can't have sex. You just say you say your, your your qualities are great. It's like when you're getting fired. You say all the good things, and then at the end you be like, however, I do suffer from ED. Hell now no. on my profile, I say, I say my I, I open up with, hey, I'm a big girl because I know some guys don't like big girls, so I let people know that hey, I'm a big girl. So if they don't like me, they can skip over me, but I don't get skipped over like that, you know. But he catfished me. He knew he couldn't do anything ashley that's not the same thing as me and whitney and daniel had told you last time you saying i'm a big girl and then him talking about he has ed is not the same thing it's because 
some women can't deal with a guy that got ED, and some I guys understand that, Ashley. But that is a medical like condition. No one is going to advertise what that is going on. People look yeah, that's at personal. You and see that, and they can see that. They can see that. That's not something that you would have to hide and come out with. Exactly. That's why he catfished me because he hid it. Catfish you, Ashley. Well, what do you want to call it? I need a word. I need that's, a that's almost like you saying he like somebody catfish you because they didn't tell you um something about like their family or tell you something about right. their kid or something about whatever. They didn't can't they didn't catfish you. It's just they didn't get to the point where that information was kind of like you need to but tell that's me that. Very time. important. He was sexually attracted to me. Stop flirting with me all the time. And was he sexually? Now, if he, now, I if he was, if he was sexually attracted to you, if he couldn't have sex, that's he was attracted to you. Oh, he was leaking. Oh. You know, he he had the pre cum and everything, and I was like, he still ain't doing that. Like it was just weird. Oh to me. my I've god! Never, stop it! I've never yeah, experienced actually, anything. Let me ask you like something because I don't think if you ever told me this. So like when he was flirting with you, did he ever like mention like what he was gonna do to you? What you know? What was gonna happen when he saw you? Like was it anything? Now that would be some catfish. That's crazy if he did that. Yeah, because if he that, did, that would be more over the phone. Like he would say something like he like, oh, I can't wait to see you this weekend. You know, he wouldn't get in detail, detail because you that's know that's what I'm would, saying. I can't you know, wait. I, you know, I like it's not the same as I can't wait to. Girl, yeah. you know what I'm gonna do to you when I see right, you. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He wasn't there. Girl. He wasn't That's there. why I'm asking you. Like, did he say stuff like that? Not like I can't wait to see you. Like, I can't wait to do this to you this weekend. Did he put say the lime in the coconut? <laughs> no, he didn't say that. He just be like, I can't wait to see you. Um, oh yeah, see, he ain't got you, he Ashley. Got he just it. was. He just, you know, he knows his limits. Yeah, and he didn't want to put that out there on the front on the first day. <laughs> day right. One. Right. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> because it was such a waste of my time but this Damn. this how we well, i don't up. know if that was a waste of time ashley because i mean if you he you met somebody who was literally everything that you were looking for and just this like one thing i don't know if you i would say that was more than that that was just a, that was just that but okay so this is why i say another reason about the catfish because he knew already before he went to the doctor that he couldn't get the medication and how I found that out was because I was supposed to go with him to the doctor, but I had stuff to do. So um, after the doctor thing, he called me. He was like, he said, I couldn't get it, babe. And I was like, why? What happened? He was like, the same thing like last time. And then when he I was like, like last time. So this nigga knew he needed the blanche, you know, hit the do the do the do, you know, but he didn't do it. So anyway, so he must don't it? miss it then. He must don't miss being intimate and doing all that stuff. But he said he hadn't had sex since 2016 sheesh <laughs> and now and after he told me that that's it made sense to me why he worked so hard like why he worked two jobs why well, he, I mean, smoked, why he smoked a lot of weed like it was just everything just started just adding up to me you know i was like oh he's feeling that void very much but so. why feel that void i don't understand though why i feel that void when it's like you can do something about it, it ain't like you in a situation where you can't do nothing like you right. making it worse on yourself. Like. It's easier to just smoke weed. I mean, you don't have to you know, take no real steps to do anything. You just yeah. smoke. That's it. And I, I think I was pressuring him, too. Because it's not even about the ED. Like, you playing with your life at this point. Facts. Like, you playing with your life. Like, you know what irritated me when I was working at the clinic is how many people waited until the last minute to want to say that they needed a new prescription for insulin. I'm like, you need this to live. Why are you waiting till you only have two days worth left to say, oh, I need my prescription refill? Yeah, that's Living dangerously. Y'all, I, 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 I just want to understand that. I just want to make it clear for those that are watching that are new to this story. Um, I did not leave him or stop dealing with him because of the ED. The main reason why I stopped dealing with him because not only did he suffer from ED and then um, uh, high blood pressure and diabetes, is he also was clinically diagnosed as like depressed. Oh, and no. so that is a lot. Like, don't ever let nobody, like, my thing is, I'll be feeling sorry. For my thing, I'm a sponge. I soak up other people's bullshit and I feel sorry for them. Believe it or not, I know I'm feisty or whatever, but I'd be like, oh, how can I help? You know? And so I was attempting to do that. Went to the grocery store, made sure he had his appointment. Even though he couldn't physically fuck me, you know, um, I still cared for him. And I could still see like possibly a future with him. Because I was like, well, if he get these steps. And I said, well, while you in your journey, I can do my journey too. Like my weight loss journey, you know. 
I was in there like swimwear. But what happened was I went to go get some cheesecake from this very popular uh, place called Misha's Sinful Cheesecake. It's in Cologne. She's amazing. And so I know what he likes. He's a cookie and cream type guy. Mind you, he's a diabetic, so he ain't supposed to be having this now. So they didn't have the type of sweets that he liked. But I went over to um, Dollar, Dollar uh, General, if y'all know that area. I went to um, Dollar Tree, I'm sorry. And I went and got him some cookie cream stuff and some chocolate and peanut butter cookies. Stuff that he liked. Yeah, it was a dollar, a dollar each, but that's what he likes. I know what he likes. I went back all the way on the other side of Columbia because, mind you, I had to go to um, Spring Valley area. He's over there on Broad River. So that's how ready to drive. And so I get back, I give him his stuff, and then he didn't say anything to me, but he waited until I came back home, and he was like, he texted me, and he was like, yeah, and by the way, you um bought me this cheap cookies, but you went and got you some expensive cheesecake. And I was like, <laughs> that man complaining about the about the, the stuff you didn't even have to get him? Right, exactly. He's eating none of this anyway. Yeah, I, that's not cool. You can't be inconsiderate. I, I could have got you nothing. And you and you complaining. And you got to take in mind that I That'd be last time I get you money some. already for in Whole Foods. Whole Foods is not food line. Whole Foods is more expensive. It's organic, you know, but but I was trying to invest in him. But yeah, that was just enough for me. Then he sent me a text message like five something in the morning, gave me suicide vibes, you know. Oh, like, yeah, he was just that's what I'm saying. He was like, it was he was a lot. And I was like, he was like, I just not, I I, I think I'm just gonna decide not to love because what happened, uh. we discussed over the phone that I didn't want any more oral sex from him. I don't want you pleasing me orally because it made me feel like a lesbian. And so, and then I'm talking about he was wanting me to <laughs> reciprocate. And I'm like, for what? <laughs> like, nothing's going to happen. He probably still liked it. You know what I'm saying? Like, he looking did. at it. He did. He <laughs> did like it. But I didn't even feel comfortable, like, jacking him off anymore. Like, it was just uncomfortable. Actually, when they got no pleasure out of that, yeah, that's something he might like. But, okay, what's she going to get you down there? Like, what? Move it around. <laughs> Move it around a little bit. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Jay. <laughs> he said move, move it around. <laughs> little, he said a little bit, move it around. A, a little, little bit. bit. Yeah. Yeah. That's, 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 that's supposed to be like that. Is that what you're supposed to do? That's what you're supposed to do right there? Yeah. No. Okay. I, I, that's just a waste of time. So um, I, we, we discussed over the phone like before I came back. And I technically, because I we kind of touched on this a little bit, but we didn't go into it. We probably could talk about it, but um, Remember, Dan, you said something about uh, there are women in marriages that are getting sexually assaulted by their husbands, meaning when a woman say no, but her husband still want to have sex with her. So I low-key kind of feel like he's sexually assaulted me or whatever, because I was like, I pretended to be sleep, you know, when he got off of work, but he, <laughs> he didn't care, you know, and I'm just like, and that was my first time ever, like, when my book come out, I better be like a number one seller, because that was my first time having like an out-of-body experience. Like, I literally... I see what women say, like when they be faking it, or because like I was faking like I was asleep, but I knew what the fuck he was doing, and I was just like, because I didn't want to do what he wanted me to do, <laughs> you know. I was like, because it's pointless. But um, and he violated me, and I told him that. I said I thought we discussed this. I like I I woke up because I couldn't let him, you know, do all that extra shit, and I was just like, I said, uh, uh, nice, I ain't want to do all that, and so he was like, okay, and then I could tell he felt kind of bad about it, um like when I left the next morning and stuff and um I talked I said I told you I don't want to do that like it's it's pointless and that's when like the next like morning like five something in the morning that's when I got the text message about him saying um it's no point in even trying to love again and um it's pointless and he's just going to be by himself forever and he's just you know going to focus on working and getting his money up and stuff like that and then he, it just gave me like he was giving up on life not just on love but on life and so I, I woke it for some strange reason I woke up and touched my phone because I always touch my phone you know um when I'm sleeping and stuff whatever and so I saw that message so he sent it maybe like 10 minutes prior and so I was like, oh, shit, because he scared me. Like, I thought he was about to off himself, you know? And I was like, I called him, like, two, three times, and he didn't pick up. And so I sent him, like, three long text messages. I was just like, hey, um, it's going to be all right. I told you, um, you know, just I, it's reversible. Like, you can turn it around. Just, you know, 
walk in between your lunch breaks and you know just giving him offering him advice and stuff and then that's when like the next day his mom called my phone and left a message and saying something about oh my husband no he he want to marry you and stuff and I was like what because I never talked to his mom before like ever because I don't like meeting moms until like it's I know it's like going somewhere and um so yeah Yo, people that are clinically depressed, like like chronically depressed constantly, like I've dealt with, with somebody like that, not like dated or anything, but I had I, I knew somebody close who was like that. And they put a lot of pressure on you, you know, like with their whole with all the depression and everything. Like they're always, oh, I just I think I'm just like like how you said, making it sound like they're gonna kill themselves and stuff. Right. Why should you have to deal with trying to talk somebody off a ledge, you know what I'm saying? When it's like you're just trying to you know, live your regular that's life, a but lot you gotta to deal with it's Yeah, it's too much pressure. It is. You gotta keep checking on them. Hey, like making sure they're all right. That's that's too much work, man. They need to honestly they need help and they're trying to use you as like a therapist, but they need a professional. You know what I'm saying? Somebody who's really depressed needs a professional to help them. Cause I feel like that's probably was the case with um what's the what's the couple? Um Ariana Grande and Mac Miller. Like he was, I think he was like going through some stuff or I don't know if it was depression or whatever he was going through and I feel like she was trying to be there for him and be there for him but it just became too much and like they broke up but he took it hard and uh, when he passed away I guess I don't know if he commit suicide, commit suicide? no he, he OD suicide. OD yeah, or OD whatever suicide. yeah a lot of people were like blaming her like you know you should have been That's there for him up. you knew yeah you knew. I like stuff like yeah that. like it was like you, you just stay with him because he's way, depressed you, that's messed up yeah you should have been there for him and I was like making her feel bad about it but it's just like that's a lot to deal with like it's not her responsibility the realest thing, the realest thing I ever heard was and it was actually told to me by somebody because I had like it was it's not necessarily depression but I deal with anxiety just a touch yeah and, um um she she said it's not fair for me to have to help you through that especially if i'm not mentally stable enough as well so it's just a lot of people have to take into consideration the fact that the person that they're putting on this weight on it could be either in the same boat or in a similar boat or just one trigger away from being in that boat yeah you know what i'm saying and, um, and but not know how to deal or not even just know how to deal just with know it. Know how to deal with it. They could just, be perfectly fine and not know yeah, how to deal with it. Yeah, because you could think like, oh, this person can help me, but you know, dealing with that takes a toll on them, and then they end up doing things that make it worse. Like you know, mm-hmm. you put all this pressure on them, and then they just explode at you and lash out. You know, not realizing certain things may be triggers, and boom, you back on the ledge. And like, who's gonna talk you off there? That the same person that you thought was supposed to help mm-hmm. you right. is the person that's the reason why you're there. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Get a professional, mm-hmm. man. A yeah. professional need. Definitely that's what get you a need. professional. That's why. Did we know, have a I, conversation about that you know, on, on another podcast? I thought we did. Maybe not. I think no, we was talking about that off camera. That's yeah, but like you do okay. need to get like these, you know, people that you're in relationships with, it's good to have them to talk to, you know, if you just need to like vent or you just need to get something off your tra- your chest. But if you're like seriously dealing with issues and past traumas and things that you can't get over, it's not fair for you to feel like you you need to put all of that on your your girlfriend, your wife, or put all of that on your husband or boyfriend. Like, like Jerry said, you need to get some professional. That, and that's what I think the dude, the cowboy dude is like. He what you like, about to say, Courtney? No, I was gonna say something, but my thing is like real minor, <laughs> so oh. I, don't, I should even. What was it? What was it? I was gonna say like I I I agree with you because I don't expect anyone to be like the person that helped me out with this type of thing. Like I get panic attacks, but even I don't even know where they come from. Like mm-hmm. I, I they'll like. I'll get a panic attack and then I'll tell someone about it. And then they'll be like, well, are you stressed? And I'm like, I don't feel stressed. Like, I don't know where they come from. So it's like real minor thing, but I don't expect anyone to be like, let me help you. Let me be the person to help you with your pain. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to. Well, I mean, like Courtney, you know, even though you're saying like you have those panic attacks and you don't know, not saying that there is a specific reason, but talking to a professional will help you track your, like what was going on around you. Like, you know, I mean, yes, sometimes, you know, people just have to like happen, but you really literally have to find the triggers and it may be something that's not that obvious. Like it may be something that's not obvious, but going to a therapist and backtracking, because like, even for me getting in therapy, like just dealing with like childhood things and my upbringing and parents and all of those things. 
when you go back and realize like some of your habits and the things that you do and maybe the way that you are, like when you go back and backtrack, you don't realize that this one incident had an effect on me that I didn't even know it did. And so you won't know until you like really, really like think back and trace like what environment were you in? Like, how was you feeling? Like, did you do X, Y, Z? So I think that's why one of the reasons why we say going to professional helps because, you know, just you by yourself and you talking to somebody else, they may not see anything wrong. Oh, okay, she just had a panic attack. Like, what what triggered it? Because it's not like you just have them, um, you know. Right, no, no, I, I agree with the therapy. I think I just never thought that I should maybe go see one because they're so, like, it's not like they happen, like, often, often. It's more like once yeah. every six months type of thing. So when, I'm going to be honest with you. I feel like therapy is good even if you don't have Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Even when you like, go, they're going to bring up things you'd be like, I yeah, I never thought of it. Yeah. 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 yeah, I learned in my therapy that, which uh, like sitting in the car, like even when I used to, not like by myself now, but like when I lived with my mom, and my brother, younger, and uh, I would pull up and I didn't like getting out the car. I would just still sit in the car because I was like I knew what was in there. Like I just didn't feel like the arguing and the like. I just just sitting in the car and they were like, well, what would you do? And I was like, oh, I just go. I don't want to get in details, but you know, just I, I learned that I was an emotional eater. I'll just say that. You know, I was it was so weird because I'm so frugal and I'd be like, um, I was like, oh, I just go through the drive through and then I'm like, but I would order something off the dollar menu, you know, stuff like that. There's like, oh, so you're eating, but you're still what like you're conscious about how much you're spending, you know, and I had triggers like human beings can be your trigger. Like they were like, it was just but yeah, there's a lot of stuff. You find out yeah. a lot of stuff. Because that's the thing that, like Daniel was saying, like, even if you are not experiencing anything, you don't know if you have any whatever, it's good because, like, some things you don't know you're dealing with, but also it's a good place to have, like, just to know that you can talk to somebody else. Because a lot of times some people just need to vent. Like, they need to get stuff off their chest because long and long, you know, oh, I can take it and take it and take it and take it and take it. And then they get to that point where it's just like too much. You know, if you have somebody, you don't even, it doesn't even have to be much. Like when, you know, just depending on your therapist, like you don't have to get in there and just like, so tell me about your past traumas. Like, it's not like that. Like literally just getting in there, having a conversation. Yeah, and them to let you have the floor. Yeah, you just like let them, let, let, they let you have the floor. And it's just like, you start talking about stuff that you probably ain't even knew you was going to talk about. Like, and then you're going to walk out and be like, she tricked me. <laughs> like, I didn't but... even tell her that, you know, or him that, you know. For real. Like, I've had it all. I, I've had, like, individual therapy just for myself. And then, you know, when I had custody of my, my that demon child. You Stop know, doing that. <laughs> go get oh. her. You know, I'm so going to get rich off of her. But anyway, um, hashtag raisin blank blank you know but um blank blank <laughs> but uh yeah um I had to have in she had to have individual therapy I had to have individual therapy because she was taking me through shit like it was triggers for me oh like, yeah was, actually I do remember like you was taking me through care, so um, much stuff like I was in there girl I was in there crying I was just like they was like, it's not you, like, because they was just like, everybody was commending me, like, you, why did you take custody of her? I was like, because I loved her, like, she was adopted, and we, she's been in my family for forever, and then her two older sisters, they ain't shit, so I didn't want her to go back into the system as an orphan, and I didn't want her to go with the old people that was at the church, because that was some weird, freaky situation, or whatever, like, it was just weird, but uh, let me tell you something, for all my friends and family, <laughs> write out what you're gonna do with your children because that shit is serious like yeah. on paper write out who you you want your children to go to if if the uh parents if the bylaw the father or whoever isn't involved you know that need to be written down but um i'll never do that again but she took me through stuff so i had individual therapy because of her she had individual therapy and um what she was diagnosed with, well they couldn't technically diagnose her, but they said she had all the signs of, of a sociopath. And then um, we had group therapy, like family therapy. So it was just it was a lot. Courtney, somebody said they had panic attacks really bad and they went to therapy and it helped them a lot. Hi, Sharon. Well, thanks, Sharon. Maybe I will. Yeah, it you definitely know, helps. Throw no, one little session in there. Huh? I said, just throw one little therapy session in there and then see how that go. <laughs> I should. 
my problem is I'm the person to be like, yeah, you should go to therapy. That's the best thing to do. And then when it comes to me, I'm like, <laughs> like I don't know for me, but you know, for you, everybody else, go to therapy. I mean, I'm pretty sure there's something in there of why. I just, I don't know. I guess I'm the type of person where I'm like, if it is there, it's probably like the most basic thing. Like I shouldn't even be like, I'm probably being dramatic because I'm a dramatic person in general. So I'm already thinking that. So I'm like, I'm probably gonna be wasting these people's time. Like, really? Like, that's yeah, you, I think Courtney, that's you do give off the vibes when you get like, like you have a panic I'm attack like, when people tell you no. I'll figure it out. Like Don't you worry. go to therapy and it's just like, oh, you just had a panic attack because you was told no. <laughs> Why you? If you gonna give me the money, just give me the money. You ain't got to call me. Oh Lord! If you gonna give me the money, you know he gonna want. You don't have to. He gonna want something in return. Just, why you out the blue just, talking just, about? Do you still want the money? If you was gonna give it to me, just go ahead and give it. He think he's slick. He think he's so slick. I, I'm no. And then I don't. Are you talking, to Jared? Him. Because we can't hear you. No, I, we can't hear you. You talking through that mic, but we cannot hear you. Well, look, y'all, let me, all right. Well, this is, it didn't go the way I thought it was going to go, but it went somewhere. You know, I thought people was going to call in or whatever, but um, Sunday. I'm just trying to figure out why Jared's mic is not working all of a sudden. Because I, I knew he was over there moving his mouth and talking, but I was like, well, I can't hear nothing. That's how my thing was. I got this whole set up. See, mic. Courtney, we all right. Because you see, they're trying to be fancy, got these microphones, and it, it ain't I working. <laughs> let me take off my Don't back. Even work. I ain't had no problem with my microphone. I'm just saying. That's because you you already a professional. know. Professional. Yeah, like you yeah, already. I would not consider myself a professional. You TikTok famous and everything else like that. We ain't got time. I am not TikTok oh, famous. I what's am your TikTok? Not. Follow me on TikTok. What's your TikTok? I am not TikTok famous. 13,000 followers is not TikTok famous. Oh, what? Right. <laughs> you just not. Oh my gosh. 13,000. What? And you talking about that's not. It's not. There's people I mean, on there that got 300,000, 400,000. It may not be. If we started doing skits, we can get way more than that, Daniel. We, right. Google like, with 30, I got no, not, nah, look, what's good? I have 99 followers. <laughs> I will follow you. Go, go to my TikTok. I, I will follow you. What's your TikTok? What's your TikTok? I underscore mm -hmm. am, am underscore R H Y T H Y M. <laughs> Now you got 13,001. <laughs> Technically, I have 13,8. Girl, yeah, I was about to say, you oh, yeah. is so flexing. Like, oh my gosh. Is. She is so flexing. It got mm. 569,000 likes. Boy, you famous. I'm not famous. Oh, we need to take, we need to capitalize off of this. Like, I'm hey. trying. What you I think did you sign up for the show? No, no, no I didn't. You nervous? You scared? I didn't shine up for so. You should. I, I ain't never scared. I ain't never scared okay, to see you. Okay, bone So go ahead and do your little videos and try to get on the terrain. Got it, Jared. Yeah, I put uh, the Oh, okay. Yeah, you're back. Okay. You know what happened to the last person who won on the Terrell show? What happened? They had made a whole album. Granted, she well, it wasn't her album, but she, like she got an experience of a lifetime. Like fucking do the who shit. Who is Terrell? The long as, you, long as you got, long as you got the viewers, you don't have to. Accept. What is that? Like, what is that? Miss Mulatto. Mulatto take the deal. He hosts it, and it's basically like he has like singers on there, and like. You said who does what now? Start over. It's it's a YouTube show. Oh, I followed you back, Whitney. It's by this dude okay. named Real, and he has like singers, like singer singers, like he don't have the Clark sisters. There's, um, what's it called? Jojo. Like he got singers on there, and he basically plays song association with them as well as interviewing them at the same time. Oh, okay. Yeah. So right. she's trying to get me to go up there and embarrass myself. That's what she's trying to do. How would you embarrass yourself when you can sing? You can't be embarrassed. Mm. Well, pe people know their limitations because I get told that I should go on certain shows or whatever, like um, guys' grocery game, like certain cooking shows. And I'm like, that ain't for me. Like, so I don't know if he's experienced that. That's not it. No, 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 no. I would love well, I, I don't mean, know. I would that. honestly love but to. But sometimes people, it takes other people seeing something in you. Like some people don't believe like, oh, like they may think like somebody's like um, encouragement or something that they're saying is so grand. Like what you think I should go on American Idol? Like I can go on American Idol. Like I can sing a little bit, but I might not be. Like it's just like somebody else like sees that you can be so much greater. But sometimes 
in the moment you may just see like okay i'm good but not that good but it's just like you should push because i just finished up this blog uh interview that i had and the guy that i was interviewing like was just saying that that was one of his biggest challenges is like getting out of his own way and his his own mindset stopped him from doing things like the one thing yeah. that he needed to be doing because he thought like you know maybe i shouldn't do that i shouldn't take that risk it's like nah this is the moment that you should be doing that because this is where you're going to get to the next level like you're not going to get to where you think you, where you want to go if you don't take that step if you don't go when you say like when you feel like you ain't qualified or when you shouldn't be doing it that's when you really should you know what i will i will say that's my biggest problem problem. two two times when i won first place in cooking competitions I said no. And then one of the things I won, it was some last minute shit, which is, y'all probably gonna say this is so weird. It was an appetizer. It was a devil egg and I sprinkled pecans on it. One first place. <laughs> said a fuck. And wow. I was like, you weird people. Who does that? <laughs> Who eat that shit? And they right. was like, it was so good. It yeah. Was like, it's about yeah, your feeling, a, though. You my, know, your feeling need to be good. You yeah. know, so I just that's my biggest the- problem because I'm always telling people to like, you got to do it. You got to go. You got to do it. Yeah. I never, I never take yeah, myself. Because I feel like it's like that's, you know, yeah. when it's that one thing, it's just like it's almost like you want to do it, but you feel like I can't do it or I'm not qualified to do it. It's my that probably is the one thing that you probably should be doing. Yeah, that's true. Because yeah. when I entered into the shrimp and grits competition, I want you to know I was the only one there that did not have a restaurant. And uh-huh. I put crawf- I put crawfish in my shrimp and grits on the side, and I won first place. I said, "What the fuck?" I was all the way in the back, had to walk all the way up front. I was like, "I didn't think I was gonna." It was like some Price yeah. is Right shit. Like I literally was like, <laughs> because I was like, I'm just a, a caterer. Like I don't have no yeah. restaurant. I ain't think uh, nothing. That the one thing that thing that's holding you back, like the, the when you uh, scared to do, that's probably mm-hmm. the thing that you probably should be doing because it's like. Once it's almost like a barrier. Like once you get through of that one thing, it's like, no, I ain't qualified. I'm scared to do that. It's like once you break through that, it's just like everything just open up and you're just gonna be like, dang, I waited so long to like for that, right? You know, do That's that. Why I'm so ready to get my food truck. I already know. I'm probably I'm probably gonna have to pass this down to court. Yeah. I'm just hey, y'all, I'm about to I gotta roll out. I gotta drive home. That. But I do appreciate y'all having me, man. It was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. Yes, no good. Problem. Thank good you. you. Well, all right, everybody. I'm about to go good to you. see you, Jared. Bye, y'all. Hold y'all have a good city. night. Bye. All right, bye. bye. I'll tell you. We're big. Easy, okay. All right, bye.